It's always a pleasure when my boy Tony drops by the studio, man. <laughs> I like to call him Jeffrey. <laughs> like, that's, I've been that's, called that's like a pet name. That's Wuss. the yeah. name I like yeah. to call. <laughs> it's, isn't this the this is like the last stretch, right? To get yes, yeah, home yeah. stretch before the box and burns in in the house, man. Excited to have Tony stopping by and saying hi and what uh, what not. But I'm so glad uh, you guys have come back to Mind Pump. We had so many people say what an awesome course it was, and this is the. The final week for those, it's limited space available. I think there's a few slots left to get in there. Yeah, so Lots of buzz going around this right yeah. now, for so, sure. So, Tony, this is level one course on June 10th being taught for your your, your course. What are trainers going to learn in this course? Yeah, so in our course, you'll learn how to teach boxing to other people, to your clients, your friends, whoever you want to teach to. you learn how to wrap hands, how to do a boxing-specific warm-up, how to box. It's important that you know how to box before you go ahead and try and teach it. We go into shadow boxing. And then how to hold the mitts, the focus mitts, the pads. Uh, that's one of the most addictive workouts that people love. That's why we having so much sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Listen, that's <laughs> another benefit to the course. Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of sex. <laughs> no, I don't know where the fuck that comes from. <laughs> Success. Success. <laughs> we're we're leaving that in, sir. Yeah. 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 That's why we're having. So yeah. much success. <laughs> well, hey, hey, that's why I'm having so much sex too. Let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest, man. You, you do the boxing workouts. The you right know how way. to sell this. Tony. I'll give you that. And you'll be having more sex as well. Yeah, I've yeah. been I've been active lately. You can tell. Uh, yeah, we're having so much success in the box and burn gyms in California because uh, people who love the focus mitts love to hit hit them and, and getting great results from it. And like I see, clients get addicted to these workouts. I know a few years have done the boxing, but. When you're doing boxing, one benefit of it is like you get better every single time. Like, mm. like you, I might box with you one day, and then the next day you're going to see improvements instantly. And then the next day you'll see improvements instantly because people get better and better. You learn it so fast. Do you think that that's it because addictive, there's? Huh? Is that you yeah. think that's because there's like so many little details that you can continue to improve upon? Like, kind of reminds me of like golfing, right? Golfing is such a a detailed sport. Like I feel like boxing is kind of the same thing. There's so many movements going on. I've never heard anyone compare golf to boxing before. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, I I do because I see when you when you throw your right hand, you turn your hips similar to golf. Right, and you and you're using both. Both. I mean, it's a there's not a lot there's of a lot of nuances. There is there's right. A, that's yeah. probably a better word for it, Justin. Yeah. There's, there's more nuances with it than almost anything else that I can think of. And the coordination that it takes. So I could see how you would see lots of improvements just doing it more yeah. reps and more And then reps. there's always more you can learn, more combinations. Uh, you can always punch harder, punch faster. Uh, so, it's yeah, it's, it's really addictive. And I think now in this day and age, everyone wants that instant gratification. I think with the boxing training, you really get that. Because mm. you are getting better each day, and that's why it's come an addictive workout. Well, one of the one of the keys to being a successful personal trainer, especially if you're going to be doing this as a career, is to be able to offer variety to your clients, to be able to have more tools in your tool belt, to make workouts fun, and help people discover a passion for fitness. And among all of the modalities of training and exercise, boxing is one of the most fun. And you, as a trainer, you know, here's the deal: when you're doing cardio with your clients. You're not doing it with them. Typically, you're you're counting for them or you're watching their form, and and that's all very important. But when you're holding mitts for a client, it's like you're in there with that client, mm. and it, it it does. I mean, people love it. They really really like it. And your course really teaches how to do it the right way because I've seen so many people do it, and I look at them I'm like they have no business. Teaching. Oh, that's right. a great point. As a trainer, you don't want to just sit there and stare at your client on the treadmill. You don't want to be that guy. No. Yeah. No. So this is a great way to get involved with you know the conditioning of your client. Yeah. When you're that's... in there with your client, holding the myths, you're building the relationship. You're, you're close. It's a pretty <clears throat> intimate thing. And yeah, I think it's really good for building relationships. And that's something that we're getting into in the level one course, how to build relationships and how to retain clients. We talk about that a lot because you know you can get people to come and train with you once, but are they going to come back? And we talk about that, and with boxing, that really helps them come back to do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as well as the, as well as this, you also get the CEUs for NASM, ES, ISSA, for all these big uh, major major would, CEU companies. Which you need to get anyway. I mean, if you're certified with these nationally recognized certifications, they require you get these CEUs. Otherwise, you lose your certification, and this counts towards that. So it's yeah. been it's been uh, recognized by the major organizations. Um, and I can't think of, I mean, there's so many continuing education type classes you can take 
This one, I think, is one of the most valuable, special, especially... Very hands-on, which yeah. is nice. Well, it's just and your it's clients, fun. Your clients going to like it. They're going to yeah. really like it right well, away. Well, I think, and you, something we haven't addressed either is, you know, and Justin talks a lot about rotational strength. Mm. And, you know, boxing is a great way to involve that in a fun way that we tend to lose as we're adults. You know, when we were kids and we were running around the soccer field and basketball and playing on the parks, and you get a lot of that rotational, multi-planar movement where we start to lose that as we get older. So I love to incorporate boxing with clients just for that simple fact that they we start to lose this rotational strength. And so there's something to be said about about teaching clients that and the, the benefits of that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it is one of the biggest trends in fitness right now, boxing. There's boxing gyms opening up everywhere. I don't know about, about San Jose, but in Santa Monica, there's like 10 <coughs> boxing gyms now and we were the first ones there. So wow. It's getting really, really popular. Everyone, they want to be like you guys. Yeah, they do, <laughs> yeah. Which, which is great because it's, it's bringing, uh, more bringing more people in. They're marketing mm -hmm. to their clients or marketing to people who's never tried boxing before. They go and try it at their gyms and yeah, it's all right. They look for somewhere else and they'll come and find us. Because <laughs> you guys win, are the best ones. Go to the masters. Win, win. So with the, if you go to Box and Burn Academy, that's Box, the letter N, burnacademy.com if you enter the code mind pump you get a hundred dollars off every course now what's coming up right now is the one in san jose in mind pump media headquarters you get to come and take the course uh that's taught by the boxing burn academy in the mind pump media uh, facility that's june 10th it's a level one course and then if you're in australia and you're listening right now there's another one the following month uh july 6th and 7th and that's level one and level two, and that one's going to be pretty awesome as well. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Check it out. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Mm, Mind Pump. For the first 51 minutes, Adam, Justin, and I have our usual introductory conversation. We talk about... HustleCon. Get your hustle on. It's the HustleCon. HustleCon is coming up. Uh, this is a great event for entrepreneur-minded individuals. Now, tickets are normally like three hundred and something dollars. Three ninety-nine. They're getting them for two fifty. So it's one hundred fifty oh, bucks off. With we got a hookup for you. Man. Go to hustlecon.com. Enter the code Mind Pump. Get one hundred and fifty dollars off access to HustleCon. That's how we roll. We talk about Justin's dog, and they're in his eyeball bouncy ball. Fiasco. Yeah, man. Uh, he had to go through his poop to find you that. Shit out an eyeball. We talk about Adam's dog's panty fetish. No, nope, just like his owner. Just like his, <laughs> you guys are eating the panties. <laughs> like doggy, like owner. We talk about the movie Adrift. It was badass, and our criteria for choosing a movie. We're you would have to... never told that by the uh, cover. Yeah, yeah, trying to figure out who's picking Sal's movies. That yeah, was good. We talk about dog breeding and the anatomy of a dog fight. We talk about the NBA playoffs. A little update. And adding Organifi protein powder to oatmeal, something I like to do. We are sponsored by Organifi, and we have a massive discount exclusive for Mind Pump listeners. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get that discount. Split is live! Oh yeah, map split. It's up. Holy now. shit, it's split! Our new newest program. It's one. It's our most advanced bodybuilding based program. You dared us to do it. I Maps know. split. They thought we couldn't do it. Now you can get fifty dollars off. This is what you do. Go plus to, a t-shirt. Plus a free t-shirt. If you go to mapssplit.com, enter the code split fifty. You'll get fifty dollars off. This promotion ends June tenth. Then we talk about morality. Is it subjective? Or objective. We'll get into that a little bit. Ooh. And then uh, we talk about whether or not Mind Pump's dogmatic. Somebody said that we were dogmatic. Huh? Just you. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Mainly we gave just, yeah, focus we, on we gave some gut health updates. Uh, and then we get into the questions. The first question was, how do we suggest uh, somebody overcome the anxiety of body image issues when it's time to gain some weight? So sometimes mm. it's important to increase your calories, go on a little bulk, if you will. But if somebody's super scared about gaining weight or has really bad body image issues, like what are some good approaches that someone can use to get past that? The next question was, do we think that raw determination and will to overcome when it comes to physical and mental challenges is something that you're born with or can it be trained? The next question was- or Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> how does growing older- Nobody's going to know that's such an old reference. <laughs> Come on, somebody yeah. will get it. How does growing older really affect your progress and results- in the gym, and what do we think we're going to look like when we're 60? 
<laughs> I think I look like I'm 60 now. <laughs> <laughs> and the final Very question. Wise looking. Uh, ima- we had to imagine uh, if we were wingmanning for each other, how would we sell each other to the opposite sex? Based off our answers, you guys can pick who you'd rather have as a wingman. Yeah, who would you rather have? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one. Who would you rather have winging- wingmanning for you? Mm. Um, all, and I did talk again about Maps uh, Split. It is our launch. There is a discount. Mapsplit.com. Enter the code SPLIT50 for $50 off. We are also running a simultaneous promotion for Maps Anywhere. We wanted to make sure we offered a uh, more appropriate program for beginners, which would be Maps Anywhere. Um, and we're doing a 50% off Sale price on maps anywhere. First time ever. Half off. For like, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, cut the price in half. That's going on all month long. That's at mindpumpmedia.com. T shirt time. And it's t shirt time. Yeah. Booyah. We had 33 reviews. Oh, wow. Look at that. All Sal has to do is you tell people how to do it. That's my that's favorite it. number. You guys know that? 33 is? Yeah. For reals? Yep. Really? It is. That's weird. 3-3. Three, three. Good luck. It's good. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, good luck. Man. Three, three is supposed to be a good luck, right? Yeah, it three, has to be. seven. I don't care if it is or not. It's just my favorite number. Always. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, excellent. Sorry, Nine guys. people. It's it. very lucky because you're getting a shirt. Is that Larry Bird? Yeah. Okay. That's why. Ah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. All <laughs> right. Predictable. The nine winners are Amaya Knight, Normal Oscar ninety two, J Cocaine. Oh, I like Whoa. that guy. He's down. Dasher Smasher, <laughs> MC yeah. Clap Your Hands. Clap, Steph clap. Smith, Indian Girl, Cranky Sue, Danny Fink. Little bitchy. Haley Does Things 88. <laughs> what kind of things, Haley? <laughs> yeah. What she, kind of things? Wait, is she 88 or born in 88? It makes uh, a big difference. Uh, <laughs> All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. That's an email address. Send the name I just read to that email. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. What were you talking to Taylor about or HustleCon? Yeah, yeah. No, so we're sending, uh, uh, well, uh, I guess we could talk about this now. Um, I hope you guys are cool with the approval on this. So I gave the approval to, uh, I bought tickets for Taylor and for Eli to go to HustleCon, I think. As long as we don't go over the, nice. the $10 budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a little over that. These are uh, be real thrifty there. $300 tickets. But what's cool is... Um, and this is who had we had um, Sam Parr, who's the creator of um, what the Hustle. You, the Hustle is the one who introduced uh, me to this. And oh, right, I remember and, now. Right, right. So it's and it's been going for years. Taylor's told me about it before. He really wanted to go. So worse than that. Now, what's cool is Taylor was already going to go. We invited Eli, and then he actually reached out and got in touch with HustleCon. And told them, like, hey, here's the deal. I'm coming no matter what, but the boys are pro, all of this, what's going on, and is there anything that we could do for uh, Mind Pump listeners? So they actually hooked it up. So it's three ninety nine for a ticket to even go to this thing. And Now, you got you to gotta be uh, – these are, the t- these are, like, entrepreneur – Startup founders, like these are people you. If you're if you're interested in starting a business or whatever, that's yeah. what those are the people that go, right? Yeah, yeah so but they're relatable. These so are they're not like super tech techie about it. Like they have a a good you know story behind them that you can kind of you know get a lot out of. Oh, the blue just, bottle, like, the blue bottle coffee guy will be speaking. Yeah, yeah. they've the tw- got great coffee. They've got the Twitch person there. They, they uh, the founder of the blue coffee, like you said. There's a there's I think like twelve speakers that are at, slotted for like twenty minutes. So it's like 20 minutes they get up there and they talk about their their story on how they built. And it's kind of cool. I mean, growth, marketing, hiring, getting started. So anybody that's like, if you're somebody who is an entrepreneur or you're in business, um, I think this is like an awesome opportunity to go do this. I think it's cool. I think it's hip. I like what they're doing. Have you guys ever been to, any, not that I know none of us have been to Hustle Con, but have you ever been to I've been things to like, like this? Yeah, I've been to like an incubator and I've actually watched like Shark Tank type um events where they go up there and they do pitch mm. um which is really man it's 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 totally an educational process if you own a business to see how they present themselves like um what what they found in their business that worked for them and what they you know what, what didn't, work. didn't work so it's it's just another way to kind of evaluate and and see you know how you can apply these things to your own business i find stuff like this more valuable today than uh cuz i've been to stuff like this before, but today I think they're so much more valuable because the marketplace is so 
different, so fast too. It's such, it's yeah. such a dynamic. It, this is a cool place. Changing to, marketplace. This is a cool place to go to this too, just because the Bay Area is. Yeah. I mean, the SoCon, networking is. The SoCon Valley is is moving there. fast with yeah. startups and stuff like that. And this is in Oakland, so it's June twenty second. It's in Oakland. I was getting around to telling you guys how much you save through Mind Pump, which is really neat. Is it's it's three ninety nine right now. You can get it for two fifty, so one hundred fifty bucks off by nice. using the Mind Pump Holy code. Holy shit, that's not bad. Right, right. So I think that's really cool. So they're doing a really cool kickback for you guys that are listeners to Mind Pump. So you know this isn't for everybody. If you're not an entrepreneur, then obviously it's uh, probably yeah, not going to be. Yeah, doesn't apply. Yeah, it doesn't really apply to you. But I know we do have a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I, Taylor will be there, and so will Eli. So some of our team, and one of us may go too. So I was talking to Taylor about possibly. Oh, I away. love it! If you guys really got into the hustle, like and, and opted in and been reading their emails, oh yeah, I read, oh, I read every day. It's oh, they great. Do, they, they do such a good job. Yeah, they yeah. really do a good job. Yeah. So, uh, Justin, I want to hear about uh, your dog. Oh man, that's quite the drama this weekend. <laughs> I get the picture you sent. It looks like a real eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a bouncy ball that my son had, and and um, I wasn't around when it happened, but I guess he swallowed it. He just he's he's just like eating stuff, chewing everything, and like he's just a he's just a wild animal right now. Like we're we're get, we're working on the training, but yeah, so he swallowed this, and for a couple of days he was he was kind of having uh, he was puking and having like issues, and so we brought him into the vet. And they x-rayed and they found that ball that was stuck in his small intestine. And so they're like, oh, no, you need to go to the, to the ER and go take him in. And um, so we took him over there. And, like, I was I was talking to the, to the veterinarian and uh, we were going through options and everything. And um, it made it sound like, well, you know, normally what we would do is – we would have him on fluids, and so we put an IV in, have him fluids, and hope that it, he could pass it, right? So it would overnight, like if he had enough fluids, it would like move through, and kind of he could poop it out. And um, but she, like the the veterinarian, was like, "No, nah, this like highly, highly, highly unlikely that's going to happen," you know, like. And so we were just looking at surgery, and so I was like, "Oh man, surgery, really?" I was like, "Ah, How that much? sucks." <laughs> Five grand. Like uh, out of pocket, no insurance. Isn't it crazy how they can do that with like animals? Like they can they can get you for like five times what you paid for the the dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, this is way more than Katrina I even got paid so for mad at me when they when they hit me with the bill too. And I'm like, huh, we could go buy two more new bulldogs. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, she was hella pissed. Oh, of course, I know. yeah, you I cannot. That's, you cannot replace her. Well, reality, you, you obviously. Right, right, and it's right. tough because they they and then I don't know if like. I mean, I don't want to put this per- like this veterinarian on blast, but it was like it was definitely like I could feel a little bit of the hustle behind it, right? So there's there's a business end of it, and I mm-hmm. get it. Like they want to make money, you know, with everybody that comes in there, and you could visibly see that as a salesperson myself. And you know, my wife didn't really see it as much because she's like really concerned, you know, and like really like oh my god, like because she knew all the ramifications of if it didn't move, like this would happen, then this would happen, it'd be really bad, really bad news for the dog. And I was just like, I was just like, money, you know, okay, oh my god, like really, like, and I'm reading the sheet. They didn't want me to read the sheet too much. It's like, oh here, and they like turned the page on me, had me sign this thing, had me put a down payment like really quick, like they were trying to move me along and hustle me through it. And uh, by the time I left, my wife went to work and I was just driving with my son and I, and they had Arlo and I was just like reflecting on it. And I was like, oh, you know, when you get that buyer's remorse, <laughs> and, you know, and I just had that gut, that, the gut feeling. I was just like, Ugh, like that just didn't feel right. And I was just like, wait a minute, there was another option, you know? And so I called back and I'm like. Look, I I don't know. Like I don't know if I'm okay with like surgery and like going with that right now. I was like, let's let's go ahead and go with like plan A. You know, like let's see if things progress and I was like, what am I looking at with that? Like, you know, if are you going to be able to if if there's problems, whatever, you can intervene and then you can do the surgery. You know, like let's let's go with that and begrudgingly they were just like, well, you could do that. I'm just going to say that's probably not likely going to happen. And then we're just going to incur another couple hundred dollars. It was like seven to 900 more dollars, you know, keeping them overnight uh, and doing that process that they're going to add to the bill. 
And I was like, fuck. And I was like going through Turn all this heart. money in my head. And I was like, oh. And I was like, you know what? But that's only a couple hundred like added to it at that point. Yeah, you're you already know? at five grand. Yeah. What's 5,700? What's, yeah. What's 5,700 when you're spending five Gs? Already? Right? <laughs> so I'm just running those numbers. And I'm like, you know, this makes the most sense. And then, uh, so yeah, so they basically put a cancel to the to the surgery and okay, so I, I guess I sound like an asshole, but like I, I seriously was just crossing my fingers, you know, and overnight. And then in the morning we get a call. Yeah. So he did everything he's supposed to do, passed and went through. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> Got up, was punched in the a, ceiling, dude. It's a $5,000 yeah! shit right there, man. You know what I'm saying? That was a gold nugget you just <laughs> shit out. You imagine if, if he forgot that he swallowed that and he's like, he poops and he looks like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a rubber ball. It looks like an eyeball. It just starts oh, bouncing. Just oh, dunk, dunk, dude, dunk, I haven't right shared with ass. you guys this. So Bentley has this fetish with Katrina's panties. Oh wow! You know what they say and about so, dogs and their own. And oh, so, wow. the, <laughs> <laughs> so the first he is related to you, Adam. Yeah. The first time that we f- found he, this out, like we didn't. Him? Well, no. What would happen is, you know, Katrina's you know panties would go missing. You know, we she'd be like, "Have you seen my you know oh my, my teal, my favorite whatever panties?" And I'm like, "She's no. like, it's either Adam or the dog. <laughs> yeah. Someone's stealing these." And she's all, you know, I saw Bentley sucking on them, and I took them away from him, oh so I don't. My oh my god! It, it could, and I'm like, really? And yeah. uh, she's all, yeah. And I'm so whatever, right? So a couple of days goes by. And I see Bentley in the yard, and he takes his shit, and afterwards he's got like this thing like halfway hanging out of his ass. <laughs> and I go over and I pull on it, and there's fucking her panties, and I'm like, oh my oh god, my god. god. Dude. So he's done this like three times, dude. And what's funny about it is, uh, you know, it's just before we go to bed, we strip down in our clothes, we just throw our clothes on the floor in the, at night, and then in the morning. He doesn't eat your underwear. No, he just never, t- <laughs> no. He never touches my underwear man, ever, man. ever. He's never eaten my shoes, never touched my underwear, doesn't do this stuff like that, but he has a thing with her panties, man. See? That's the Funny that's theater. why I think we're all animals deep down. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, right. I find that really just as like I eat panties too. It's a thing. It's a thing that <laughs> yeah, I have. A, I can't so my, they seem to pass pretty well though. Yeah, so, in case you're wondering. So my <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, 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 in case this happens to you, you won't get yeah, yeah, yeah. So my ex recently drink water. It's funny we're talking about dogs. My ex just recently bought a dog, and part of the she's never owned a dog before in her life. But and so she, the kids have begged her for a dog. I can't have a dog because where we're staying, where we live, doesn't allow for pets. So she's been thinking about it. So I talked to her and I'm like, look, if 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 you travel or something like that, I'll help you. And you know, trying to kind of help her convince to get you know get the dog because I know it's such a good thing for kids. So now they have this little rescue like poodle mix uh, dog. Right? She went on she went on vacation. So I've been watching this dog for the past like four or five days. It's this. It's such a little mangy, cute, sweet little dog. It's so like the most spoiled animal of all time. Jessica's making fun of me because I carry it everywhere. I told her I was going to get a baby you born. Little cursed dog. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to get a baby born and put it in. And she looked at me. She's like, No, you're not. I'm like, Why not? She's like, No, you're not. Because I'm going to revoke one. your man card. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> to. But he's he's so funny. You have to like I like feed him by hand because he doesn't want to eat right now because he's all depressed and shit. Because he you know he just got rescued from a. Is that normal? That's normal, right? When you rescue a dog, at oh, first, it's a rescue. Kind of sad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. they go through that. A bit. Yeah, dude. So, but it's it's fun. We we're watching TV yesterday, just laying on my lap. How are the kids doing with it? They love him. Yeah. He's he's just super relaxed. He's like super chill. It's so always so- interesting to watch yeah. the kids now and then when he grows out of his puppy phase, right? Every if every kid loves the puppies when they're little and they want to play with them, they want to touch them twenty four seven. Yeah. And then about six to eight weeks goes by, mm-hmm. and then it's like all of a sudden it's a chore again. You know, yeah. So like it's good responsibility. No, it is. It's, it's really really good responsibility, and it's uh, it's good to have an animal. I told you guys. I talked about this earlier uh, or before in another episode where studies will show that when kids grow up with animals, the uh, their their risk of things that with like autoimmune issues go down considerably. I think from exposure to you yeah, know, pet it, dander and, makes and bacteria and stuff that the dogs bring in, it's, it's better for their immune system. So, dude, you know what movie I watched this weekend that you guys have to watch? Which it one? was really, really fucking good. Adrift. Did you guys watch Is that it? in the theater? Or yes, it? yes. No. Have you guys seen the trailer for that? Uh-uh. So it's, it's a true story about this young couple. It was in 1983 that goes sailing across the Pacific and they hit a storm and were adrift for 41 days. Oh shit. Holy shit. And it's true. It's a totally true story. How I don't want to get water. 
I, you know, they well, had. That's so, the hardest part, yeah, don't right? Spo- don't spoil I don't want to uh, spoil okay. it. Right. I don't want to spoil it. But it was but, good. They no. drank a lot of pee. But it was really, really. There it is. It was a really, really well made movie because the story itself is compelling. Obviously, I mean, somebody who's, you know, you got to survive out in the middle of the ocean for forty one days. That's I just want to. I just want to. I want to ask real quick while we're looking at this cover, this this movie right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That when you when you and your girl sit down and you are looking at movies to go watch this oh, weekend. Yeah. No, this looks total romantic. You know, comedy. I'm thing wondering how. I, I'm wondering how how sappy. How much say you have in these movies? The, who, in, is it kind of like the? Is it like the music at the workout in the morning? Is uh, it kind of similar to that? No, no, no. I feel I, like it kind of. Like, there's a lot of really good movies out right now. You know, not to say this isn't good because it sounds good. I'm interested. No, no, now. no, no. It, this was an. This movie is an uh, excellent, excellent movie. And yes, I did want to watch it. I, I here's the thing because I just couldn't. I couldn't see because Katrina and I were literally two nights ago. Trust scro- me, scrolling through the movies that were out, and this one didn't even. Trust me. Jump on my radar. Trust I mean, me. This or Deadpool? Right? Super. I, I yeah. saw Deadpool already. You did. Yeah, See? and here's the thing. So you I love got that one in. I love the movie so much. It's not hard to convince me to watch a movie. I'm that, the same way too. You know, I'll watch I, almost I, anything. In, in your defense, I'm the same way too. Like, yeah, I, I'll watch I, almost anything. I, I, I'll watch a lot of stuff. But no, I just, I just, I'm looking right now. Yeah, at based on the cover, I would probably like <laughs> yeah. say no. Look at the yeah. rate. Look at the ratings on it. See what the critics are saying. It, it says no score yet. Okay. It was. It's an exceptionally well made movie because the story itself is compelling. But you know the way they dramatize it, they can make it a good movie or make it a bad yeah, see, movie. It doesn't even have yeah. a score yet, Sal. Like, what led you to go like this right here, honey? This you just there took you a go. chance. There on you that go. One. Audience score eighty one percent. Okay, on the oh, app yeah. at the on the app, there's no score on it. Yeah. Yet. Is that a good score? Eighty one percent. Oh yeah, it? yeah, it is for sure. Uh, Rotten uh, Rot Tomatoes really, seventy one. What, what's considered six, a good sixty seven and above is my marker. Oh, is it really? Yeah, I'll go see something as low as sixty seven. Well, there you go, dude. Anything less than that tends to be crappy, yeah. unless it has something like. So, because we know that uh, most of the movie critics in here, even though this is supposed to be, so I like the audience, right? That's that I go by that number more than Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes is critics. Yep, yeah. yep. So, and you I'm have, with you. Yeah, well, so you have critics that are going to hate on it. And because, both of you haven't seen Solo yet, right? I saw it. You did? I yeah. did. I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't no, impressed. I, good. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. I think we talked about it. It's, yeah, it's, I was trying to like it really, like hard, and mm. it, it's just I'm worried about the franchise. I'll yeah, look at that audience. Audience score on that was only sixty four percent. Yeah. See, a drift. Yeah, better movie. See, it tough. wouldn't have made it. See, so you missed by three percent. Yeah, for you me. did. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Mm. So, what did you guys end up doing? Justin's obviously you were watching your dog. What did you do? Anything this weekend? Uh, I was over. I went over to the valley. I went over and seen my best friend and uh, his parents, which are like my second parents, and went and visited his new French bulldog, dude. Did, I took a picture. I put a post it on puppy. It. Yes, the little white one. Oh, I did see that. Oh, yeah. dude, he's cool. I love French bulldogs. So do I. Yeah. What were Those are cute dogs. now? French bulldogs come from the same. St- same strain, or not strain. Sorry, excuse me. The same uh, like breed roots. Do they both come from? Because you have an English bulldog, right? Are they related to a French bulldog? Uh, to a French bulldog? Sure, I guess. I mean, I, the, maybe the English bulldogs are born in England, and the other ones are born in France. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the lines, they bang. No, yeah, no. I, I mean, I don't. I don't. I actually don't know much about the the French lineage as much as I do about the English bulldog. The the it's I'm sure it's a similar terrier mix and um and and pit bull type of mix they they probably all have they're mm. the same similar bloodline you know, you have American you have English and you have French and they're all related but I don't know the exact I'm sure there's somebody on here who dogs more are of a, team America dogs fascinate the shit out of me because uh, they have there's something I can't remember what it what it was specifically but there's something in their DNA that allows them to evolve at a incredibly rapid rate or at least you can selectively breed them to change specific features on them in ways you can't do as nearly as quickly with other animals because you you look at most dog breeds didn't exist 150 years ago 200 years ago didn't exist at all and now we have like you know they range from like mini you know mini chihuahuas yeah. To these, you know, Great Danes that are like the size of a horse, and we still have wolves, and we still have wolves. Yeah, it's it's fascinating to me what we can do with dogs, um, and and the things that we can we can focus on with through the breeding. Like, you know, I because I've been looking into it because I said, like I said, my ex has a dog, and the dog that we have as a rescue dog is kind of a poodle mix and small, and I'm assuming it comes from breeds that are bred to be in your lap and want to hang out with you all the time. And that's exactly what he what he does. He just wants to yeah. hang out the entire time. He doesn't want to do anything else that other dogs like to do. He just wants to like be on you. Your dogs are like that. Yeah. English bulldogs were bred uh well at least the kind that you have were bred to yeah. be lap dog dogs as well. 
I like that. I like I like my I was teasing my butt my other buddy who bought this uh Labadoodle, so it's a Labrador or a retriever mm-hmm. or something and a poodle all mixed together. It's just a ugly ass dog. <laughs> <laughs> this lame ass dog. I know I'm offending somebody who has one, of right? Of course. They're just ugly. They're yeah. ugly and they're boring. I mean, the, the the big dogs like I was telling I was telling them I was like but you they're know, hypoallergenic yeah no that's what's so great and I have like allergies mo- most people yeah, and, yeah, get them for that and they don't yeah. shed so I get yeah. it like if you have a really nice house and you don't want your, your the dog hair everywhere I get that so I and so I totally understand but I was just teasing because what I love about the the dogs both English French all those is I love the how they are like little humans and they have to be attached to you. They want to be everywhere you're at. They're they're really, really attached to the owners. Yeah. Which makes them feel like they're almost like a human or a kid mm-hmm. that you have. And so, uh, which for somebody who doesn't want to put the effort into that and doesn't want somebody who doesn't want to be bothered and they want a dog that they can throw in the backyard and just leave there for eight hours. Like, yeah, it's not the dog That's not the dog for you, right? My boys, you go, they go outside for 20 minutes at most to pee and kind of sunbathe for a minute and then they're scratching at the door like, hey. They want to come back yeah, and hang I, out Yeah, I live inside. I don't live outside. Oh, God forbid I give your dog yep. any attention. He's not leaving me. They're not leaving me alone. Yeah, yeah, no. You know? But I like that too. I'm the kind of person that, you know, I enjoy active dogs. I enjoy that kind of stuff. But I honestly would want a dog that I'm just going to chill with and and you know hang out with and teach their own. If I had, if I was some, my other buddy is an ultra marathon runner, so he has uh, a Weimar runner like Justin, so he runs and exercises. So how cool is it to have a companion that mm-hmm. can go get on a trail with you and run for 30 miles? Yeah. There's not a lot of dogs that can run for a really mm-hmm. long time like that. So you know everybody is different. Like I'm definitely a chill person when I get off of work. I work like crazy yeah. and a madman doing my personal stuff, and then when I come home, I'm the guy who puts his feet up on the couch and mm-hmm. puts the laptop and so I like having a dog that just wants to chill with one me. of my one of the one of my favorite breeds of dogs are the <clears throat> am staffs American Staffordshire Terriers or the, you know pit bull terriers or even the original Staffordshire Terriers the ones that you know that they brought over from England I freaking love them I think they're so beautiful <laughs> so athletic and so strong and there's so many misconceptions about those dogs being aggressive towards people and all that other stuff mm-hmm. which is just it's not true it's not true in any at all in any of their breeding. Like if, if you understand how dogs are bred, um, you can see the the things that they're bred for. And pit bulls and American Staffordshire Terriers and Staffordshire Terriers, they were bred to either catch uh, rats and mice or to fight other dogs. Mm-hmm. But they were never bred to be aggressive towards uh, humans because dog aggression and human aggression are two different things. And if you kind of deconstruct the the anatomy of a dog fight the way that because I I had this book I can't remember the name of the book I think it was called Fighting Dogs really really brilliant book and I read some others on this because I grew up with pit bulls so I used to read up on them and if you look at the anatomy of a dog fight of course you did it, it, I love it if you look at the anatomy of <laughs> dog fight they were just a typical they were, these were all 13 year olds we all have dogs we're all grown up like Sal's like I'm gonna go read a book about yeah. this dog yes. <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna go play catch with this dog yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna let him lick my face yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I read it to him too I was like hey let me tell you did about did you know so yeah. <laughs> so the, a dog fight the, the way the anatomy of a dog fight is you know the two owners bring their dogs typically in the old style rules or at least when most of this breeding was happening we would trade dogs and bathe each other's dog to ensure that there wasn't anything foreign on the your dog's fur that would mess with my dog so we trade dogs and we'd bathe them then we give them back to each other oh, put them in the ring we're in the ring with the dog along with the referee if a dog turns and snaps or bites towards a human or shows aggressiveness towards a human disqualified immediately and you lose right away during the whole process so Yes, they were bred to want to fight each other and to be extremely tenacious, but not to be aggressive towards uh, towards people. Because if they were, then that's not a dog you'd want to breed. You'd lose money. Well, a good trainer, and this is something that I might... So, so they're extremely loyal and obedient, and if you're a shithead yeah. and you're a macho... like, Because, you know, let's... let's be honest. There's a lot of those that exist. Yeah, a lot of a lot of assholes like to project their insecurities and, yes. and get a strong, tough-looking dog or gangbangers or drug dealers. And these dogs are so tenacious and loyal that you, can you train them to be aggressive towards anybody? Of course you can. Yep. And that's the problem. But on their own, they're not they're not like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's always a reflection on the owner. It is. It is. I think it, it totally is. But I think they're really, uh, again, frick, this is my favorite dog, absolute favorite dog. What were, what'd you guys do this weekend? Um, that's it. I hung out with the, the with dog the and the kids. Yeah. and I didn't watch the finals, the NBA finals. What, what's going on? So Tell me what's happening. That was game two. So this was our second. First game in the uh, we won barely in two. overtime. Game two, we just, I mean, we pretty much thumped them this yeah, game. Was, oh, shit. So we won two in a row? Mm-hmm. 
So oh. it's best of seven. That's what it is. The way it goes is two games here with us. Then we now we go to Cleveland for two games. That's four. Then it comes back for uh, two, and then one, no goes one 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 the rest of the way. Excuse mm-hmm. me. So it goes two. The first four games go two two one 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 the rest mm-hmm. of the way. If I'm doing my math right there. So it, is it so? Is the strategy like you guys explained to me the the strategy of like the the team play versus the pass the ball to LeBron's LeBron, happening? It's, it's happening. Yeah, yeah and, and it's and it's just yeah, they're moving the ball well. It's what's really uh, it's honestly in my opinion the 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 real championship was and, and I know there's LeBron fans out here they're gonna hate to hear this but the real championship was the Warriors versus the Rockets. I don't give yeah. a fuck what you think. <laughs> just as much as I love LeBron, was, yeah, as mu- much as I agree that LeBron is the greatest player to play the game, he just does not have a supporting cast around him to handle a well-oiled machine like the Warriors are as far as the way they play with passing and moving the ball. And you're seeing an incredible display of that. So being a Warriors fan, it's a fun game. It's a fun series for me to watch because I love to watch uh, when you have kind of, and I don't say perfected, but when you have really uh, it's sharp- like watching the old model and the new model, you yeah. know, and it's like kind of seeing that contrast. Like it, that old formula worked really well for a lot of years, and now it's like you know you can see how uh, this new standard and, and team dynamic. Well, you, you know, know what, what I like about it? Effect. It's funny that w- what we're all into and what we're passionate about. Part of what what the passion behind Mind Pump is is exposing a lot of the bullshit that's out there right now and all the hype and trying to teach people about the found the foundational things that have been around for a very long time so we're all kind of purists in ourself with with yeah. health and fitness well that's kind of like the, what we're watching right now in these finals is you know the warriors are a very purist type of game they, they play fundamental basketball which yeah. is why some people hate them they're like oh yeah. it's Boring because they pass and screen, you know, yeah, so you bank shots like John yeah, Wooden style, right? Yeah. So they play, they play really good fundamental basketball, and they are the, arguably the best ever at that. And you know, LeBron James is arguably the best ever ISO ISO ball playing, guy super ever. flashy, does crazy awesome moves, like drains yeah. it still, but like he's fighting like <laughs> three, four people at a right. time, and he's so good that he could actually carry him and his entire team all the way to the finals by because his he is that fucking talented but then when you run into yeah. a team that actually plays really good fundamental team basketball it trumps that oh it does and it's fun to watch isn't right? that yeah. the lesson in life too yes. you know what i mean it's like people working together really well always will always be, powers it always, is that's yeah. why i like it i that's, know it's, that's it's, why i love it's how it so it should much be. yes I love yeah. that. That's so you know, awesome. it's funny. I I actually uh, did some old things I used to do in my childhood this weekend. I, we went creek walking, and we went up and down this creek because it was so fucking hot, dude. But that was one of those things I used to enjoy so much as a kid, and we just decided, like, let's just barge it. And we went for, like, two miles or something down this creek and just walked all the way down. And it was, like, it was crazy how... Like, you know, when you went to, to uh, Hawaii and you mm. did that hike... Oh, I love and, it. And you had to really pay... It, like, like in like make sure everything was was going in the right place because like all these rocks and like the the creek and everything was like uh it was crazy dude like i i had to be like on point and make sure like my kids were balanced we were like falling and but it was it made it more adventurous you know and well, like, it makes you it makes you have to be super present right yes yeah, you can't be te- texting on your phone while you're walking across creek rocks you know no, just, just no. not gonna happen it's also super rewarding when you're done like when you're yeah. done with it you're like oh shit we did that how did your kids feel about it they loved it I mean, they were complaining at some point because the, their feet hurt and everything, you know, and like, uh, and so we were doing it like barefoot and we were like barging through all these like crazy terrain and, but yeah, you're right. It was the present thing. Like I didn't think about anything at the time. It was so nice to just like, you know, be there, do that. And then we all had this sort of shared experience with it. So I, it was, it was awesome. Dude, the, uh, the, the protein, the Organifi protein in, in oatmeal thing that I was telling you guys about yeah. a major hit in my house. Oh yeah, yeah. The kids, everybody loves it. Jessica loves it. Was that not something that you used to do a lot? I've never done that before. Oh wow! See that when you brought that up, like it was a big deal. I was like, wow, that's that was a very staple. You know, even before I was into competing, that was a staple meal for me. I yeah, just I've never done it. What I had, I always had a hard time. Um, you know, for me, being my height, my size. You know, getting enough protein uh, in to continue to b- build and grow. Like I was just, I struggled with that. I was a carb fanatic. I was a sugar fanatic. So I always gravitated towards carbohydrates. 
So I had to find ways like how do I bump my protein intake? And one of those ways was adding. Well, I just because I just finished a like 60 something hour fast and I broke it in the afternoon. And then the following day, I'm like, typically what I'll do is I'll go fast, hard keto. Then I'll go kind of paleo-ish and then I'll go with some starches leading into the next fast. <clears throat> but this time I'm like, you know what? My, I've been feeling kind of good. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the fast and I'm going to go into eating carbohydrates. And then the next fast, I'm going to lead into that going keto. So I'm going to flip it and see mm. how that affects my body and see if there's a difference. Because there's a, there's a, I can make the case for either way, right? I can make the case for leading into a fast with carbs, then fasting, which will naturally put me into keto, and then staying ketosis for a little while until moving in, up with the carbs. Or I can make the reverse you know, argument and say, Going into a fast with keto may make it easier, may you know derive more benefit because I'm, I'm already keto, you know ketogenic, and then throw those carbs in to refeed, stimulate those stem cells to build new you know immune cells, new whatever, right? And see if I get more of that rebound kind of strength effect that I've that I've been noticing. And so I did that, and I I did the you know Organifi protein and the and here's the deal with oatmeal, um, I get this gluten free oatmeal, and it's not even made with oats; it's made with yeah, I was going to say, what is it? Then? It's made with like, like amaranth and, or and quinoa and buckwheat and uh -huh. some other things. And you can get it flavored with hmm. you know, like maple or whatever. But I don't want it I don't want the flavored ones because of the added sugar and stuff like that. And plain, you know, plain oatmeal or whatever, plain porridge, whatever you want to call it. It's it's okay. It doesn't taste bad or anything. You can put fruit in it. But I'd rather shit to to add some flavoring. I would rather add the Organifi protein powder because it's that chocolate flavor. Mm -hmm. Tastes really good and it's and it you know, mixes as well. And it's adding protein. Mm. So whatever. Oh, dude. Uh split. Split is out. Yeah. Dude. I can't you know what? This the, one's been a long so we, time waiting, man. So long we, time coming. So Lots we released it. We this. released Map Split to our forum uh over the on Friday, I think it was. Um and we always do that, right? If we have a new program, the forum gets <laughs> access to it first. So far, I've gotten some messages already from people who've been doing. You know, it's it been. A, love I, it. I'm glad you said this. So this is something we haven't even brought up in a long time. Part of the 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 perks of being in the forum, aside from communicating with the three of us because we're in there all the time, and and then also with peers and other really intelligent people in there, you also get uh, fifty percent off of all the t-shirts yep. that we sell. And then you also get access to any program releases, guides, or anything like that. You get early access to it, and you get it for. A cheaper rate than the sale rate that anybody else gets it for. So, there. I mean, easily if you end up getting a couple shirts or invest in a program, it pays for itself. Of the yeah, what, what and the we have some live Q and A stuff coming in, like with Jordan Shallow. We have some other people coming that's right, in. That's that, right. Uh, we're going to start introducing. What is the date for the Jordan Shallow? What so, do you know the date off the top of your head, Doug? By the chance, seventeenth. So the goal is this, and I'll just be transparent with the audience. What we're working on right now and, and getting organized with this is. Uh, you know, we're going to start with one a month right now. What so it's so we can get it organized, and then we'll build upon it. But I'd like people like uh, Jordan Shallow, Doctor Molly, mm -hmm. uh, Doctor Ruscio, and uh, Doctor Brink to be featured guests once a month inside the private forum. Well, they'll they'll talk and do a live Q and A with you guys uh, in the forum. So we're starting that with Jordan Shallow on what date? June. Oh, we're gonna yeah, find out. Know. I think it's the seventeenth, but Justin it's the will 17th. find out. Yeah. yeah, I have to confirm. Yeah, but uh, I've already gotten messages from people who've already started the the program, started split. Now, here's the deal. I, I want to. We did release a bonus episode that explains a lot of this, but I'll say this here in case you didn't hear that one. Uh, split is an advanced program, and it's definitely we've gotten lots of messages over the years <laughs> from people who are saying, "Hey, if thirteen, if, if if mine, it's the what? It's the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Thanks. Yeah, sorry." If Mind Pump was to design a split routine, how would you do it? Because there are some potential benefits to doing a split. It's just that all the traditional splits that we've seen are terrible. There are these like one body bar a day type routines. You're not training the body very frequently, the whole body. Um, many of the exercises are not effective because if you're doing 20 sets in a workout, it's like the first three to six sets are effective. The rest of them are these kind of uh, finisher type exercises, which in comparison are not very effective. And there's a lot of other reasons why. So we did. We designed a, a split program, but it is a six day a week in the gym program. This is a it very, is advanced. a very advanced program. You could have good recovery and good. And experience. I'm glad we didn't, you know, put this out as early on because you should go through at least 
MAPS anabolic or MAPS aesthetic before you lead into this program, just because it doesn't make sense unless you're somebody who's already at really high volume, like maybe you're already a competitor and you've never bought any of our programs. You're like, oh, this is definitely up my alley. That I can see someone doing this as a first time program. But everybody else, like if you're an average person that's just trying to get in shape and you're consistent for a few months, then you're not so consistent, then you're consistent, which t- typically is like 80% of the population or more. You, this should be a your second program, you know, or in a perfect world, like for my people that have reached out to me that are interested in competing, uh, in a perfect world, I put them on maps aesthetic first, like during their off season or getting ready. And then this is pre contest. Yeah. Then split. It's 12 weeks. It's perfect. 12 weeks leading up to the show. And we included uh, neat recommendations in it. So it's like literally leading you up to your competition. Right. You know? Um, it's, you know, obviously like all maps programs broken up into phases. Um, we added a mobility component, Mm -hmm. which is a never addressed in bodybuilder routines. Mobility is never addressed Mm -hmm. in bodybuilding type muscle building routines, which from a, of course, from a functional standpoint, mobility is extremely important. I don't think I need to make that case, but I can also make the case that mobility and function are extremely important for muscle development, just for developing a symmetrical physique. Because yeah. I'll tell you something right now. And longevity. Yeah, poor symmetry in, in bodybuilders is almost always the result of poor function. It's not because somebody goes in oh, and Oh, that was trains. one of the things that we hit it off with Ben Pakulski. We all yeah. agreed on that big time, was that it's almost always a disconnect there. Mm-hmm. I mean, he what did he say? I forgot how he worded it, but he talked about like a, a lagging or a... You know, a muscle that won't develop. It's not because you have bad genetics with that. You can't connect to it. Yeah, you have a bad connection there, and it's not something that you cannot not fix. Right? right, right. And so, if you work on mobility, you know, at least even if it's just a little bit, but you put some focus on it, then you're going to find your muscles are going to develop. You know, the, the the physical representation of that is a more symmetrical and balanced looking physique rather than this physique where some muscles look very developed and others uh, don't, and it's because your body just doesn't move yeah. very well. And the ability, of course, to move within full ranges of motion, connect to that entire range of motion, have control, you're going to build more muscle uh, as a result. And we do, it, it's on sale until June 10th, yeah. right, Doug? Yes. Is it June 10th? So if you use the code SPLIT50, you get 50 bucks off, and that's uh, on our site, uh, mapssplit.com. So, and you can also just go to our regular site and get it as well. This right. is seriously the most intense program we've ever put out. Oh, I already I mean, got- we, can't, we can't undersell that that fact. No, I want a lot of people don't realize that. Like, I mean, we we say that you know, like this is an advance, but th- like literally, this is this. <laughs> if you're a beginner, this is totally not for you. No, you'll fry yourself. Yeah, it's too much. I've had people message me already, and they're like, "I did uh, the leg workout portion of there. <laughs> My legs are feeling pretty toasty." <laughs> yeah, and I like get another workout well, in the week for that. Yeah. That's why I mean the, work your way up towards it. I think that was one of the things when we when we first were talking about programs and the three day a week, and I know there were some people that were turned off by it because they want to train six or seven days a week and they just like doing that. Mm-hmm. It's not that um, I don't work up to training seven days a week. I used to talk about that all the time when I was competing. Right now, I'm not. There's no way I would run this even program right now. So where I'm at in volume of my my volume of training right now. I wouldn't run map split because I got to work up to that. It w- mm-hmm. I would follow anabolic, then I would go aesthetic, and then I would go split. So this would be even for me three to six months out before I'm using it because I would want to ramp mm-hmm. up yep. before I'm doing something. Or otherwise, your body will adapt to that, and then you won't have a lot of room where to go from there. So use the other programs to lead up to this for sure. Did you guys see the, the Insta Story um, poll that I did on my page? <laughs> the the one about morality. I saw you put it up there, but re- refresh my memory. So the question was, and it's a great, uh, and we don't need to get real deep into it because that could take a full couple hours by itself, but the question I asked on there was, is morality objective or subjective? Like, in other words, is there a right or wrong that's true no matter what, or is it all up to the person to decide, like, oh, right, wrong, and, you know, it's kind of up to me. Right. And so far the poll is, it's almost 50-50 split. Hmm. And I, I surprisingly... Had lots of people tell me it's purely subjective, that uh, you know it's totally up to the person what what's right or wrong, hmm. and then I would replay and then I'd ask them the question, well, then is murder or rape or those things subjective? They're like, no, of course not. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's there has to be like certain ideas out there that are like, okay, everybody sort of subscribes to that. Like that's something that like that's, that's a moral law that that 
basically all cultures can agree upon. The reason why I posted that is I read this article. I can't remember the name of the psychologist, but I've read other psychologists, uh, like Carl Jung, for example, talks about this, but how uh, having be- believing that, r- that a morality is subjective or relative or relativism leads to a state of mind that is uh, without purpose or mm-hmm. where people feel like life is meaningless. And, where the, and then the opposite, if people believe that there's this kind of underlying objective truth that is larger than them, and it usually comes from a belief in a higher power, that people feel like they have a purpose and meaning. And um, it kind of, it makes sense to me when you think about it that right, right? Like if you believe mm-hmm. that there's a higher power, then you do believe that there is a, a, a right or wrong that's outside of you. It has nothing to do with what you, whether you think it's right or wrong that that's probably the driving force. Well, I, think it, I think it's that simple. I think the people that are going to believe in that believe there's something greater, they're going to they're going to think that it's objective and somebody who doesn't think that at all typically is, is right? going to yeah. think it's subjective, yeah. I think. Typically so I think it's that's that clear cut. I think almost any if you have a 50/50 split, I bet you if you ask 50% of the people that said so it was atheist or Yeah, or right. Yeah, yeah, right. If you ask half of them that dis, that said it's subjective, they're going to say one thing and the other half are going to say the other first. Well, the so. interesting thing about human uh, about human psychology, it seems to seems to to be this is kind of uh, generally accepted in, in I guess psychology that if people don't believe in they have to believe in something so if you eliminate that they tend to if you eliminate like belief in a higher power and you ask someone okay you don't believe in a higher power then what do you believe in then many of them say oh I believe in science or I believe in whatever or if you watch their actions they tend to worship other things like money or nationalism or whatever or celebrities or so yeah so it's interesting it's like almost like we need to have that but it makes sense right because we're such social animals we need to have this underlying base understanding to in order for us to be able to operate otherwise uh society wouldn't work right if if you believe certain things were fine and i believe that they were wrong and adam believed the same thing mm-hmm. and we just live that way then uh there, there there would be lots of chaos within you know within a, a society um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing I always go towards is because people are so different, I think the fundamental belief should be that if you don't hurt anybody or steal from anybody, then it's okay. Like, I feel like everybody can kind of agree on that and that kind of, but anyway, interesting, interesting conversation. Um, still p- poll is still going on. So I'll let you guys hmm. know at the end. Are you getting a lot of people that are actually responding and talking to you? Lots. I got oh. like 50 DMS yesterday oh my God. from hmm. people. And so I was going back and forth with a lot of them and having this discussion and, and uh, I th- I th- it's funny the people who are like no it's totally subjective and then when I would reply to them with some questions they were starting to question what they were you know what they were saying yeah but how about how about some of the people on the forum that uh, think that you're becoming a little dogmatic over that here me- <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny yeah. actually yeah we're yeah, all like a big echo chamber dude. yeah really yeah. Like, yeah. I don't fucking agree with these guys all the time I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're talking about what show, I don't know what yeah. show you're listening to yeah <laughs> I think maybe I've let off on like arguing more and more with you, but I think I think that what's so great about the conversations that we have in regards to you know what's going on in politics or whatever that it's funny to me the people that get triggered and that it bothers and they and they they want to revert to oh they're being dogmatic it's like no we're having a conversation like nobody in here is claiming to be no. an expert in that area or saying this is the way it is you have three guys that have opinions that are sharing it. And I mean, there are some things that maybe we agree on, but by my subject and we'll put out opinions. It does, like, honestly, I have no camp that I'm subscribed to. Right. Like it, it, it's just about rational thinking, think your way through the whole thing and then listen to, you know, the arguments and how it's presented. And, and that's it. Like case by case, like I don't, I'm not liberal. I'm not conservative. I'm not, you know, like the best thing you could call me is like a moderate. But yeah. it's like it, but that it, doesn't even doesn't even cover it because no. because even then I could sway, you know, on liberal like like social issues or, you know, you could sway me on conservative. It, it just depends on what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Well, you know, we bring up mostly what the beginning of the show has evolved into is kind of current events. It's what's happened yet. What one of us, you know, all of us are reading different stuff because we have different interests. You know, we're talking about the finals, right? That happened last night. Right. So. For and then the complaint was, or the the question that somebody had, or the, the suggestion that somebody had on the forum was that we bring somebody on the show with you know opposing views to that topic. It's like, well, that's not how this works. Yeah. The way this works is we so literally this is hardball. We stay yeah. Yeah. well, not only that, but we <laughs> we stay. And now you, yeah, yeah. I don't want none of us stay want this. To be, nobody wants this to become a political, religious type of fucking show at all. It's that 
we're talking about things that is that are currently happening right now in news that was one of us just read the day before and then we're sharing our opinions now what it takes to get a guest especially a guest of high caliber a guest that would someone who would like let's say for example a strong liberal or social right. socialistic point of like, view we're getting bill maher on like that person what it would take to even get them on the show is like months of communication with their people and our people just to get make that happen all to talk about a current event that trump did fucking yesterday like i'm sorry that's not gonna happen mm -hmm. yeah. like i'm not gonna Impossible. waste that much yeah this we're still health wellness you know is our base and then we have oh, topics just, that we talk it's about total health that's it total health is the is i think what we're all interested in generally but health is a large that's a big sphere. Like what? Yeah. Like health includes, you know, how you live your life. It includes your money. It includes your business. It includes how you feel about yourself. The well-being of others. Your spirituality, of course, yeah. your fitness and your nutrition and all those other things. You know, are politics part of your health to to an extent? You know, it is. If people are, are have an impact on how you live your life and stuff like that. Well, you know what I'd say to people that have that, that feel this way about these topics is this is why we have an incredible forum and we encourage you guys to speak whatever. Oh, so that's where the debate is there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and if you think, and if you don't think you can do it, then go out and listen to those people that you think have a complete opposing view to mind pump. And then let's talk bring about it. it on, then bring it on the forum and we'll yeah. talk about it. Like that's a great place to do that. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to shape our show around just like you said this is not hardball you know saying yeah, this we're no. not trying to turn into a no, political I, no i think that the whole it's obnoxious to listen to yeah. anyway you can I only think do so much debating that would be a cool like whole episode you know what i mean if we had someone with some interesting views that we could discuss and i debate. definitely think we should do it yeah well you know, i think we once or i don't know what a few I mean, times here and there when we bring a guest on here it's never i mean i i like to think that we we bring guests on that i think that are interesting i mean i just had a somebody who i disagreed with that we had on the show and you got you know i think sal agreed with her more i disagree with with her like she wrote a whole book on fear mm. and I, I think I was very clear that I disagreed on many of her points and I think it came at her multiple times so we don't just put people on the show that agree with mind no, pump whatsoever no. in fact a lot of times that's not even like in the question like oh what are their views or do they are they going to say what we're going to say like many times I mean look at our we just had Lane Norton on the show like mm. Lane and us when we first started we had a lot of things that we disagreed with. And he just posted a, a post yesterday with his little monster talking about artificial sweeteners. I must have got tagged like six times on there. <laughs> People <laughs> trying to get us. <laughs> it's hilarious. That yeah. guy, I tell you what, you know what I feel bad for him is that he's a, he is doubling down on it so hard. So hard. That he could probably get away. I drink monster. I had a monster a couple days ago, right? So every once in a while, I you get a hair. What, was it hair in my ass? Is that what it is? The saying goes? <laughs> hair uh, up your ass. Hair yeah. up my ass. Yeah. What about yeah. that, right? And <laughs> and, and I know Katrina likes those things, and so I, uh -huh. I, I picked a, it was like it was one. two for five dollars, so I picked one up for her, one for me for a drive heading somewhere. I mean, but this guy's like got cases getting sent to his house and he's drinking two, three know, a day, know, and I'm just like, oh man. Oh <laughs> dude, did you yeah. see that you gotta feel pretty confident in that shit. Speaking yeah, of artificial that does for you. Speaking of artificial sweeteners, because my one of my biggest issues is how it affects the microbiome. Did you see the studies that uh Dr. Andy Galpin post on his- Yes, I tagged you. Yeah, so uh, the microbiome, the, a study just showed, can, is directly connected to your VO2 max. Wow. It, it actually uh, it actually accounts for like 22% of whether or not someone's, uh, when someone has such a, uh, so much of a better VO2 max than someone else. Up to twenty two percent of that crazy. can go right now. Down is to that their is that what their their starting point is? Because VO two max can be changed on a daily basis. So I didn't read the whole study, but the way he, it was written is it can account for up to twenty two percent of that difference. I wish Andy lived closer. He's one of the guys that he does post some really cool stuff that I would love to get on on the radio mm -hmm. and talk yeah. and debate with. Because well, th dude, there was another study I saw before that that showed that the you know how the ketogenic diet helps with uh, epilepsy. And people with seizures. Actually, yeah. that's the first medical application of it. Right. They've narrowed it down to the gut microbiome changes that happen during the ketogenic diet. That's probably having the anti-seizure effect. Hmm. It's the my, it's the gut, the microbiome. I am telling you guys right now. The more we learn, because we're still like not even close to yeah, understanding we're just scratching it. Scratching the surface, man. That is going to revolutionize medicine in a way. Well, that listen how many you, you hear the bodybuilders starting to talk about it now, don't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I saw. I see. Um, uh, what's his name? Fucking the rhino. 
Why can't he? Oh, Stan Efferding. Yeah, Stan Efferding is talking. Has been he has been for like the last year or so, big time talking, mm-hmm. g- going that direction. It's finally trickling to that. Yeah, side. you start you're starting to see it more and more. And that's why. Oh, there's a study by uh, it says relationship between cardiorespiratory fitness and relative gut microbiota composition in healthy adults. If you guys do not follow our boy Andy, you, he sh- I think he, in my opinion, like uh, uh, we've had a lot of doctors yeah. on the show yeah, and a lot of favorites. scientists on the show. Um, Andy Galpin is one of my favorite. When you you talk about him, Ruscio, and I, I I got love for Lane too, but the way Andy and the way that Ruscio like explains studies for me, I th- I think they they do it in a very digestible way, mm-hmm. and they're very practical about the information. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I find with some scientists, and I know we've raised Lane about being like this, is they. They, they marry the science so much mm-hmm. that it's like, this is all that's saying, so it, it, this can't be true yet. Until someone right. proves me in a lab that this is the way it right, is, right, I'm right. going gonna, gonna to rebuke it completely. Until well, he admits all the time that like his like thoughts going into the experiment a lot of times are completely the opposite of what he finds. Oh, yeah. So it's just like such a humbling process to where you, could, you hear that in the way he describes things, which is refreshing. No, dude, it's this, this, this whole area of science and study is I, I swear to god this is a whole it's like it's like discovering a new fucking planet or it's like discovering the new world like we had all these maps and all these you know the, the, these maps of the earth or what we thought it looked like and then all of a sudden you discover oh shit there's a whole nother sphere or side of the sphere with the whole nother ocean and and, and you know land and uh, peoples and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. it's just like that like we 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 know it exists it's not flat we're starting to realize that it has major impacts on your entire body everything your brain your well-being how you think so once we figure that out now think about how they could potentially manipulate it to benefit people now the one shitty thing that i have to say about it though is there's so much that we don't know about it and it has really opened up the floodgates for all the gimmicky shit. Of course. I mean, now everything is, oh, they're, dude. everything's got probiotics oh, oh in it. Oh my God. I know. I was just having this conversation about, you know, gut, you know, uh, you know, health. And, and first thing before I could even start talking about it was, oh, I'm taking my probiotics. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Whoa. There's <laughs> much like, more. Yeah, to- it's not like it's, you can't narrow it down to just that. Like, I, I and will, that's what's happening. I yeah, will make really- some predictions right now. So we, we predicted a while ago that they'll start throwing probiotics and everything. It's already starting to happen. So now you're starting to see like, you know, cereal fortified with probi- probiotics or, you know, probiotic water or whatever. Like, okay, that's already happening. Yeah. Here's the next thing. It's going to be probiotics targeted, designed, quote unquote, because that's what they're going to say. They're not really doing it, but designed for specific goals. So it's going to be like fat loss probiotics with bacteria that promote fat loss yeah. or muscle building, uh, you know, yeah. or, you know, fitness bacteria, yeah. Yeah. anti-depression, yeah. you know, probiotics or that's whatever. A great, that's a great company. hundred percent. fitness bacteria. And you know what? We don't know enough of that. But here's the thing. We do know if you damage, it's not a good idea. So I, I would go out there and say that there's probably the biggest scamming that we'll see in the next two to two to three years is CBD and microbiome fucking pills. Combine the two. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be the CBD probiotic. <laughs> fat burning bacteria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first Ketog- It'll eat it all up. <laughs> the first ketogenic CBD probiotic protein. You know what I'm <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, guzzle that shit down. <laughs> That's going to do yeah. everything. So <laughs> optimized. But you know what, though? Because it's now sprinkling into the bodybuilding market. That's the other one I should have said. That's driving me crazy right now, what? too. In fact, I got- so Everything's eat. optimized. No, nah, and everything's- oh. No, the, the nootropics has become like oh, that, yeah. everything, too, oh. which I think we're going to see a backlash and all that stuff, too. We will. But yeah. by the way, we're, we're going to get some someone sending us some nootropics. Some oh, yeah, company yeah. contacted me. It's like, hey, is it like the same? Pot. I'm like, send us some samples. <laughs> I'll try it out. No problem. Yeah, I got somebody doing the same thing. Hey, if I like it, I like company. it. But you know, here's the thing. It's so we're starting to see gut health being talked about in the muscle building world quite a bit, especially like you just said, Stan Efforting. So I think what we're going to start seeing more of, or it's going to accelerate, is this move away from artificial sweeteners because we know that they have a negative impact. Yeah. Because once big bodybuilders start saying. Hey guys, you need to have good gut health to build muscle. Supplement companies are they're going to follow suit, and you start to see more and more supplement companies have to move away from the artificial sweeteners. So, mm-hmm. sorry, Lane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on, to them monsters. Yeah. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from My Fit Food Diary. How do you suggest one overcome the anxiety of body image issues when in a gaining phase? Do any of you have a history of clients reluctant to bulk because of it? Uh, all of them. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember too many of them that I, I don't know very many people that I think had, you know, body image issues or anxiety around, uh, you know, gaining weight that I told them that we're going to start gaining weight and they didn't fucking freak out. It's one of the most challenging things. Lane said something really good. And Sal, I know you've said stuff like this before is, you know, you, you have to shift your focus. So even though your, your ultimate goal may be to lose 30 to 50 pounds of fat off your body, and that's why you're hiring your coach or that's why you're starting on your program. But initially, if you know what's best for you is to, to rebuild your metabolism or reverse diet out and start to actually add calories and potentially add weight, I think you have to learn to, to, to change your focus. Your focus, even though your long-term goal is to lose 30 to 50 pounds, right now I'm going to currently focus on my strength goal. I'm going to look at strength. I'm going to look at, you know, what did I start off when I first started bench pressing and where, you know, where am I at now two, three weeks later and th- look at building as your goal, even though you know deep down the ultimate goal is that you lean out. So you've You've got to learn to shift your your mental mm-hmm. focus, or else it's just going to eat away at you. I, I so I've never had anxiety issues over bulking because I always wanted to bulk, but I had major issues with trying to get lean. In fact, I never tried to get lean because I always thought I was skinny, so I was always in this kind of constant. Yeah, I was, bulk. I was on a thirty year permanent or fifteen years yeah. of permanent bulk from twenty to thirty years. Right. Now, bulk. now one thing got me through that or got me out of that kind of state of mind. And that's when I started training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So when I started training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I, my focus was taken off my body in terms of trying to get bigger. And I started to move it towards performing on the mats and performing on the mats, you know, being too big for your body. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I'm forcing my body to be real big and heavy, you know, I don't have a huge structure. So if I'm walking around at 220 with my bone structure, my body structure, that's a lot of extra weight that I'm kind of forcing on my body. And it doesn't, I can't move as well as when I'm a strong, let's say 190, which is much more of a natural body weight for me. And so in jujitsu, I had to focus on performance, which meant I had to naturally start to lose some weight. And because I changed my focus, like what Adam said, from, you know, the way my body looked to how I was performing on the mats. I allowed my body weight to come down. It wasn't that big of a deal because it was all about performance. And this is one of the best and easiest changes in focus I think you can do with a client because there's lots of ways you could change your client's focus. Like I can I can take a client and say, okay, we're going to change your focus from weight loss because I want to put you in a bulk to um, you know gaining muscle size or gaining muscle, but that's still kind of a body-centric focus and it, it's kind of a difficult switch. But if I change their focus from body centric, how I look to performance, which is totally different, like more like strength specific, like what Adam was saying. Yeah. Like if I'm in the gym and I'm lifting weights and I'm just focusing on my strength, I don't even, I'm not even looking at myself. It's not even in the, it's about how good you feel and how strong and powerful. That's it. That's it. And so I would just, and I've done this with clients. Like I'll have female, typically the female clients have a real tough time with this. And I'll tell them, look, we're going to put you in a calorie surplus. I want to speed up your metabolism and I want to build some some muscle. But the best gauge as to whether or not we're going in the right direction and whether or not we're going to affect your metabolism positively is strength. If we can get you stronger in the gym on a consistent basis, I know that more likely than not, your metabolism is speeding up and, and more likely than not, we're putting on some muscle. We're definitely not losing muscle, that's yeah. for sure. And so then they would understand that like okay strength faster metabolism let's just focus on strength within a couple weeks these female clients or even within a week they'd be excited about the weight they were lifting like oh shit 
I was able to squat. Yeah, because twenty it's, more pounds. It's or- a, like you could totally tell when you know, you know you're you're on a surplus. Like how that feels. Like how much more strength you feel. Uh, just when you have the energy. Like the energy. If you're constantly in a deficit, and I know a lot of times, like some of my clients were, are just constantly in a deficit. Always like super paranoid about ever gaining weight, and uh, you know this is a big struggle for a lot of clients coming in that you know they do need to build muscle, and so yeah, to be able to shift that focus and have them really feel their way through it and um, go through uh, you know just like any of these like specific exercises where you could show tangible results uh, just based off of them living in a surplus, it's going to mm-hmm. really help them mentally to to get get over that hump. Yeah, now I would tell these clients to uh, not use a scale, so I would. T- Tell them like I, I don't want you to weigh yourself at all. We're going to use uh, your lifts um, as that we're, your gauge, so your strength. Um, and then I would, uh, if I did weigh them, I would have them stand on the scale and they wouldn't look at the weight. I'd have them stand on it backwards, and I would tell them I'm going to have you stand on the scale. You're not going to look at it, and I want you to see what the weight is. But just for me to monitor, so I know if we're going too high with calories or if I need to add more calories within this period of time. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't even let them do that. And you know what's funny when people don't weigh themselves. And when you change the focus from things that are, you know, focused on body centric, how I look to performance, it's it, their anxiety, their general anxiety tends to, tends to lower. Like, you know, how many times I had female clients tell me when we would do this, they'd be like, God, I just feel so much better. I don't feel so anxious about it. And the irony of it is they would actually make easier. It was easier for them to eat healthy as a result, because it wasn't this huge, like mental focus of, of whatever mm-hmm. it was just they didn't have the stress and because you know how much stress and anxiety contributes to people eating the wrong type of foods and the wrong choices mm-hmm. it makes a tremendous impact i mean when you're stressed and anxious a lot of people reach to food for comfort and so sometimes changing that focus completely from how you look to how you perform man it makes a huge difference now it can go in the opposite direction as well i've had athletes that all they care about is how they perform. Yes. And I'm trying to get them to improve mobility, correct imbalances. Right. And they're so hung up on their strength and they've, they now yeah, they see strength. Oh, I was benching 315. Yeah. Now I'm only benching 275 and freaking out like they're just losing muscle because they see the strength go down. Too. So hard. Adam, how did you, how did you finally cut? What was it that finally got, said, okay, I'm going to let myself lose weight on the scale? So, well, it was competing. Uh, so I had a different focus uh, up until that yeah. point. Up until that point, my entire lot, and that's it's funny, right? I had such a different focus that, and it's so crazy that I un- I understood and I knew all this science, but yet I was still motivated and driven by my own insecurities that I didn't even uh, never really spent the time reflecting on myself and my own programming, and my own nutrition, like. I just in my head wanted to be so much bigger, right? And so always looked, just want to be bigger. Always wanted to be bigger, and uh, I, you know, I'd never been to that. I still wasn't at that point. So why would I ever consider cutting? You know, and if anything, if and I, I never like. Um, I did have times where I cleaned the diet up. I would say, like there was times where I, I was always in a permanent bulk, you know, or trying always trying to eat a surplus of calories. But there was times when I was eating nutrient dense foods versus eating kind of garbage within my diet, and that was the difference of my leanness because I never stayed. I was in obviously the exact same body fat my entire training career. I would sometimes allow myself to creep up to 14 percent body fat, and then I would kind of lean out down to like ten. But it wasn't because I was trying to lean out. It was just that I was tightening up the diet as far as what I was consuming. I was still Still trying to bulk. I was still trying to get four or five thousand calories. Just, it was a difference between a dirty bulk and a clean. Bulk. Exactly. <laughs> that was exactly the only difference. Now, then, when I had to get on stage and I had made the commitment, like, okay, I'm going to compete, you know, or I'm going to get myself into shape to compete, and the goal was to get leaner than I've ever been in my life. It was it was actually a hard transition, and part of that was committing on Instagram, which was funny. That's when I started my Instagram and said, okay. I'm going to go from the fattest I've ever been. So at that time, I was 20% body fat, uh, which was the highest I've ever been in my life. I'm 30 years old. And now I'm going to go down to the leanest I've ever been. I'd never seen anything sub 9%. So the goal was below 9%. And I remember making that mental transition saying like, what I can't be hung up on because what used to bother me in the past is if I were to lose any weight, I would see my arms not fill out my shirt, you know, or I, things would get loose on me and, and, I, and that would really fuck with my head and that would force me to start to bulk really hard and aggressive again. And so I said, you know what, it's not about that. It's about me getting leaner than I've ever been in my life. So don't attach yourself to the shirts and not feeling right. And I knew that was coming and I was going to be okay with it. And then I began. Now, the crazy part that blew my mind was... As I started to reach numbers that I'd never seen as far as how low of a body fat percentage I was, 
I started getting these compliments more than I, I know I'm in the gym all the time, but in my gym, in the gym every day for almost 15 years now, same people always kind of see me. Now all of a sudden people were walking up to me and period like, dude, what are you doing? You're jacked right now. And I'm going, I'm jacked. Like I've been, I've been trying to be jacked for 15, 15 pounds lighter. Yeah. I'm 15 <laughs> pounds lighter than I, I was like two months ago. And people were telling me I look jacked and I look big. And that was a really aha moment for myself going like, wow, you know, I've always been chasing this look to look big and buff. And if I could just drop my body fat percentage to where I was pretty lean and separated, I, I gave that look off. It just goes to show you how powerful your own perception is and how distorted mm -hmm. it can be, right? Like I experienced the exact same thing. I, the first time I really got myself shredded, shredded, I was... You know, I, I had got I had got lost some weight because of jujitsu, and then I stopped doing jujitsu, and I was just lifting weights, and I got more comfortable with being at a lighter body weight, and then I'm like, you know, I just I want to see how shredded I can get. Let's see what happens. And I remember three or four weeks into it, I didn't like it because I felt smaller. I didn't like that feeling. I was like, I don't like feeling small. But people, same thing. People were telling me, "Oh, dude, you look fucking buff." And I'm like, I look buff, like. I'm lighter than I've than I've been in a long time. Like this is really weird. So I just ignored how I felt because I knew my perception was distorted. I knew this by this point because I'm already probably in my you know maybe my late 20s or 30s or early 30s. So I just kept pushing past it and got to a point where I did get really lean, really shredded. And when I would look at pictures of myself, I could almost see what they were talking about. And little by little, I was able to get rid of that distortion. But it is pretty crazy how well, and I know we're warped it is. We, I know we're talking about leaning out, and this person's more is the reverse of this. But same thing. But it's, it is the same thing. And in fact, I'm, I'm helping a, a good girlfriend of ours, Jessica, right now. And she came to me, and she's heaviest that she's ever been. She's actually competed and been on stage before and really lean. And, you know, I told her that the mis the mistake that most people make right here is you're about to get on it again and you're going to start calorie restricting and then picking up your, in your intensity and picking up your movement. It's like, no, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to increase calories and I'm going to start strength training you first. And you may even go up on the scale. The goal is to kind of stay the mm -hmm. same, mm -hmm. maybe up one or two. And she's been now at it for a month and she literally sent me a message two days ago, just like, oh my God, I've never seen my tricep with it. She's building muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, when she, in the past, anytime that she would get overweight or feel fat, you know, she would go right to a caloric restriction. Well, in a caloric restriction, the likelihood of you building a lot of muscle, especially for somebody who's not a first time lifter, she's not a first time lifter, she's lifted a ton of before, the likelihood of her building more muscle than she's ever seen on her body in a calorie restriction is almost not possible. No. Yeah. So the fact that I'm keeping her fed, and that's one of the things I tell her, like, do not, I do not want to hear about you being hungry. I want to know that you're feeding your body. Just we're making good choices and, and we have, you know, she knows what to eat as far as the, what types of food she can choose from. But it's been very important to me that she's staying fed and that we're feeding your body when it needs to be fed and giving it the calories that it needs. And she's giving me this feedback and she's like, my scale is the same. She's like, I haven't, I haven't moved on the scale. Well, we dunked the first time. So you hydrostatic away for those that don't know what dunk is. So we got our body fat tested through the, the, the water Under, submersion. Underwater water way. Right. Yeah. So she, and she, I had her do it four weeks later since we started. So she just did this just a couple of days ago and uh, weight is exactly the same. 165. She hasn't, she hasn't moved on the scale, but she's dropped 3% body fat. See? And, and that With was more calories, right? Eating, eating more cal. And so when you look at the, it works folks, yeah. right? When you look at what has happened, you know, is she's lost significant body fat and she's also built a little bit of muscle and it's zeroed out. So the scale is showing no move, you know? So, you know, if you're attached to the scale and attached to your weight and that's how you look at things, I could see how that could discourage somebody, but it was great. And I was so glad that she did this as far as doing the, the, the dunk process because I know it's helped her make that mental switch. So that is something that I, I recommend to somebody like this. If they're struggling really hard, you know, give it one month. Just believe in the believe in the process. Eat in a, either, a, you know, a calorie maintenance or a calorie surplus of good, good balanced, nutrient dense foods while you're strength training. Get yourself, you know, measured body fat way, uh, wise the first day that you start follow that have trust the process for four weeks do it again i bet you money you'll see a positive a positive effect and the, and the biggest mistake i see people make in that is they have a they, they struggle with this so much that they want to restrict you got you got to you got to you got to mm -hmm. 
not want to risk. You got to be careful not to do that and give you keep yourself fed for that first month and then pay attention to your, your body fat percentage. Next up is hunk in that funk. Oh, yeah. It's Justin's buddy. Wow. <laughs> Do you think the raw determination and will to overcome challenges physically and mentally is an intangible skill that some people, such as elite athletes, just have? Or do you think it can be learned? How could this be trained, if at all? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something probably controversial about this. Yes. So in my experience, much of the super athletes, also the super brilliant minds that I meet, are driven through some sort of an insecurity Mm -hmm. and so what we what and and this is something that i've always been fascinated with and why i've never been a person who is in awe of um i shouldn't say that because there's there's athletes that i see do things that i'm in awe of but i don't idolize Mm -hmm. um super athletes or i don't idolize super famous people because they're they're just brilliant at their craft now super unbalanced i totally uh, i appreciate it i enjoy it i'm in awe of what they're capable of doing but i'm also aware of what normally drives a person to be to have almost super like powers Mm -hmm. in in something so example the athlete like you're saying um, and we'll take somebody like LeBron James. Now, I don't know LeBron James personally, but I'm I'm pretty familiar with the regimen that this guy puts in to be the athlete that he is. And I would be willing to bet that anybody who's really close to him, whether it be best friends, mothers, daughters, you know, relationships that he's been in, things like that, I would be willing to bet that they've suffered greatly for him to become the greatest basketball player of all time. And we do such a good job of celebrating all these athletes and these super people because we market with them and we, and we sell to you and we sell to everybody. And we would never want to talk about how bad these people are with their relationships and how bad they are everywhere else in life, because it's not about that. We're celebrating this thing that we're into. So, you know, I, I love, that's why I always say your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. And somebody that has expressed it at this high of a level is probably out of imbalance somewhere else. Well, you see that with like Tom Brady. You see that with the very extreme example of Lance Armstrong. And it's like we glorify that and we glorify the fact that, you know, they have all these, they've overcome like every obstacle in front of them, but they've done it in a way where like the, the sheer focus and will and determination is is an obsession that it consumes their entire like everyday thought. Right, and so to to be able to hang out with somebody like that is going to be exhaustive. So I I agree with you guys, but I think there's more to it than just that. I definitely think that at the highest level, uh, it, it, there's a a sense of lacking that these people have that drives them to do the insane amounts of work that is required to achieve those those levels of of performance. But That's I also the, think there's yeah. another piece. I think the other piece of it is this: is that Early on, these same people uh, did things that reinforced in their belief that they themselves could affect change, or at least they themselves are empowered enough to affect change. So what I mean by that is, if you are an insecure person, but you also simultaneously believe that you have no control over you know, you know your insecurities, you have no, no control over how you can help yourself or the things that you can do, then that insecurity will express itself at, in, in other ways and other types of dysfunction. Like if I'm insecure about my body, um, like extremely insecure, but I don't think I have any control over it. Well, I might just say it's genetics and I'm just not going to care and I'm going to eat whatever and, and be depressed or whatever. On the flip side, if someone's like, look, I'm insecure about my body, but I know that if I work my ass off or if I learn as much as I possibly can, I can change things for the, for the better then you combine those two things and then you may see some incredible amounts of performance. So is this something that people are born with? I'm sure there's some, somewhat of a genetic effect, but I think it's mostly taught. I think you mostly learn it. And here's how I think you learn it. You learn as a child by overcoming challenges. And it, they start off as small challenges. Like you're presented with something that seems to you like a difficult challenge to overcome. You work hard, you overcome that challenge. And what becomes strengthened now within you is Every time I come up against the challenge, if I work hard enough or if I try hard enough or whatever, I'm going to have, I have the ability to overcome that. And if you continue to move through that process through more and more difficult challenges, 
you're going to become stronger, uh, or at least the yeah. You the, strengthen your self belief. You so much so that yeah, you combine that with an insecurity. Well, now you get obsession. Mm. Now you get people who are like, I'm going to make the first private I, rocket I to land on the moon. We're, we're talking about the extreme example yeah. of that, you know. And so, like to take well, it on that effect. But there's a healthy version of this, right? Of that course. everybody can learn that, and that I think sports is one of the best outlets to be able to provide totally. that in order to then take what you learn mentally. Um, from real time, you know, cause effect actions of, of being able to overcome obstacles, and now, you know, being in a classroom setting, being in a work setting, being in a relationship setting, realizing you know there's there's ways to overcome these things, and you can work your way out of it. Um, you know, that's that's a powerful thing to learn, and that's all part of life. Like this, like, <laughs> you could go from any angle with this, and and it's it of course this is a skill you have to learn as a human being. Mm -hmm. There's levels of this shit, and there's to me it's always it has everything to do with sacrifice, right? It reminds me a lot of like when a, a client would come and they would like tell you like this is what I want to look like, you know, like uh, this cover of a magazine of some some model or whatever like that. And, you know, one of the things that I, I spent a lot of time with with people that would present something like that to me, an image of what they wanted to look like, mm -hmm. even if they, they had the genetics to kind of look like that. Let's, let's say they have a similar body type. There's some people that will you'll never look like that body type. You guys are, your bone structure is different. Your ethnicity is different. You carry weight and muscle differently. You'll probably never look anything like that. But then there's body types that are similar body types. And with enough hard work and sacrifice, you too can absolutely look like that. But what I think people fail to realize is that the amount of sacrifice that it takes to get to these certain levels, right? So it's just understanding that if you want to be at the highest level, the the amount of sacrifice that it takes to do that. And some people and it's different for everybody because some people have a higher genetic potential that they naturally are more gifted. So if we if we use the athlete analogy, LeBron James and I could practice and work as hard at being a great basketball player the same amount and put as much effort into it, and I can become a great ball player by doing that. But he may be able to become a, a more a greater basketball player because he also has the yeah, genetic potential has more gifts with going into it with all of that hard work. Which again, why I love sports because I think sports are the greatest expression of all of those things culminating together right mm -hmm. it's the mm -hmm. you're you're a genetic freak for that you were built for that sport and you're putting in the, the work more than anybody else and because of that you're the greatest in the world at the at this sport and then there's this spectrum that we can fall anywhere in between there is that you know maybe you don't become the lebron james of basketball but you put enough effort and you take and you sacrifice enough to be pretty great at it i think just a lot of people have a hard time measuring that or understanding or being okay with sacrificing that because then you have like these clients that they want to look like this cover of magazine but then they also want to have sunday fun day with their girlfriends and go out drinking and have margaritas on sunday right. and it's like is it possible well yeah it could be possible but you're making it really difficult for yourself if you're not willing to let go of some of these things to put that extra you know it'd be better on sunday instead of doing margaritas you were in the gym working out you're most certainly going to get towards that goal that you claim to be so important to you and i see this even with athletes athletes say they want to be great at a sport but then they also want to sit and play video games with their buddies on Saturday. Or they want to go to Cabo and go on a, a Mexico trip for seven days where they drink beers and they party at the pool. And it's like, well, LeBron James isn't going and doing that. Maybe he is now in his career, but he wasn't when he was coming up to become that guy. Well, right? as far as being born with it and not being born, I think it's an interesting idea because, you know, like depending on how you grew up and who was like your parents or whoever, like coach or whoever like modeled that mentality like towards you, you, you aspired to be like that, right? Like that's something that was like an intangible skill, but you, you learned it based off of like uh, somebody else around you in proximity um, versus that just coming from your own thought. Like I want to be the best and then going through that process, you know, to, uh, it's interesting to think about if like a LeBron James, like was in a, in, in a setting where like, you know, everybody had a different mentality towards work and had a different mentality towards like being great right, at right. something. You have to, it's the difference between a fixed mindset and a, and a uh, growth mindset. You know, a fixed mindset is things are the way they are. Um, there's nothing we can do to change them. A growth mindset is I have a lot of power over how things are yeah. and how hard I work or what I do. Well, that point is so good, Sal, because it, it's, it explains a lot of the success that I had in my life because 
I found out early on I didn't have a lot of that at the beginning because I was so young and little, didn't realize. And then as I got older, I started to put together like, oh, I, just because I'm in this shitty environment doesn't mean that I can't control mm-hmm. control things. Yeah, you have a growth mindset. Right. And mm-hmm. I, But I was forced into it at an early age, which allowed me to experience that early on and then later on learn yeah. to harness it and then to this develop in spite of your environment. Yeah. Right. And this is why I talk the, the way I do to my kids. Like, oh, my son is a good example. My son is exceptionally good at math, for example. Very, very good at math. He's, he's actually... Um, gifted in some ways at, at doing math. Now, do I tell him when I have conversations with him, do I say that to him? Do I say, wow, you're so smart or you're, you're so gifted. If I do, uh, it's followed up with, um, but what I really enjoy the most is how you challenge yourself or how you push yourself, or I can see you worked really hard at that because I want, I, I want my kids to be growth minded and I want them to be able to challenge themselves. And I don't want that fixed mindset of whether or not they're smart or not, mm-hmm. because at some point he's going to encounter something that's challenging. So let's just imagine if, if I create this fixed mindset in my son where he thinks he's smart and it's just, I was born this way, it's genetic, and that's why everything comes easy to me when it comes to math. And then he gets to a point, because it'll happen, mm-hmm. where he takes a class like calculus or, yeah, or something else. brilliant. And that. now it's hard for him. Well, he might, he might not want to try anymore because it shatters his belief that he may be... So now he's going to look at and be like, well, fuck it, I can't do it. I guess I'm not good at it. Mm-hmm. Rather than the whole, you know, well, I am growth minded and I can work hard at it. And this is what I was brought up to believe in. And now I'm going to challenge myself and push myself. Look, people, not everybody has the same potential, but everybody has potential. Right. And that potential, that range is much bigger than you think. You have a potential for terrible and you have a potential for good. And it's up to you where you fall within that spectrum. Right. Now, that potential, sure, there's genetic factors and things that you can't control, but there's a wide range. What's the that, quote growth, that? My, that growth and fix is so powerful, though. I remember a, uh, an example of just like a high school athlete that I played with who was had just superstar potential, superstar potential, got recruited by UCLA and, uh, you know, a few other like major Division I colleges. And decided to go to Cal Poly, which is a great school, not necessarily at that caliber, but guess what? He gets into that school, everybody's as good as him. Yeah. Everybody's as fast as everybody's as tall as him. And then his work ethic just wasn't on par. And so he got washed out. Mm-hmm. And it was so frustrating because, like, to me, I was like, oh, this guy's going to go in the NFL for sure. He's in the NFL. Not, right, not even the case. Because you you know your work ethic and you know mm-hmm. if you were given those talents that you would be that way. That's why, you know, it's you have to ask yourself sometimes, is it is it, you know, would it be something that you would really want? Like I always that's why I don't blame or feel sorry for my childhood and upbringing because there were so many lessons and because of it I was forced to be a certain way mm-hmm. that I think is built- And you strengthened it along the way. At right. some point in your life, Adam, you you know, you had these these cards dealt to you, right? That were difficult or whatever you want to call them. Maybe we don't judge them, but you had these cards dealt to you. But at some point you overcame some of them and then you probably n- noticed it like, "Oh shit, I accomplished this in spite of that." And that only strengthened within you that you had more control right. mm-hmm. and more power. And that's what I mean yeah, when they say- your self-belief. When it says, can it be trained? Yeah, you better fucking believe it. Like if you give yourself challenges that you know are hard, but you also know that you might be able to overcome, overcome those and watch what happens. You'll be more, you'll be emboldened to continue I think it's and push imp- yourself. I think it's important to note though that you cannot, you can't find yourself comparing to others though. Mm-hmm. Like, so I think the mistake, it's I think so mo- unfair. I think most people get this, right? I think most people for the most part believe that if they put hard work into stuff like that, they could become better at the other end. But I think the problem where, where people get hung up mm-hmm. is they see somebody else who may, may not work that hard and they're working harder and right. they're, they're not as good or they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? So then they go Meanwhile, like, you're a better version of yourself. That's right, it. but they can't like hold on to that because they compare exactly elsewhere. So yeah. I think that's the the key takeaway is it's not about anybody else. You know, being an elite athlete, you can become your own elite athlete. It's not comparing against all your peers. If you compare it to against your peers and their work ethic, then you that you might end up quitting and giving up because you see yourself. Oh, I'm putting in twice the work he is, and this asshole still is it's, a starter and he's doing better than me. Like it's extremely, you can't have that it's extremely it's unfair and counterproductive to compare yourself to others because. You don't, you're not the same as them and you don't know everything about them. Yep. All you can compete with is yourself. And if you're better than you were yesterday, you're winning and that's it. And it can be a, it can be a tiny amount. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a small, small amount better today than you were yesterday. You add that up over a course of a year or two 
And boy, that's a huge difference in, in trajectory. Next question is from West Center Av. How much does growing older really affect progression and results in regards to diet and fitness? How do you think you all will change what you do as you age? What does 60-year-old Sal, Adam, and Justin look like? <laughs> <laughs> Handsome you know, as hell. You know what? I Does age affect how your body responds to exercise? Oh, of course it does. Yeah. I noticed. I didn't notice this until... 36, 35, 36 that I noticed my body doesn't respond like it used to. It doesn't bounce back as fast or I can't handle, I can't get away with as much. Like up until I notice then, all the new noises I make. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going to tie my shoes and I'm like, <laughs> get that course it's like always. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I noticed right around 35, 36, my body isn't responding the same, but I will say this, like, Here's the bottom line. I mean, that's an inevitable. There's nothing you can do about that. But here's the cool thing that I enjoy about growing older. I look way cooler as a fit and lean 39-year-old than I did as a fit and lean 20-year-old. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion. Like, when I take my shirt off or well, I go to the beach or whatever. stand out more. Way well, more. Like, I, yeah, is, I'm in a different pool now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, my God. There's when a I'm, lot less fit people dude, once you start getting up in age. Yeah, when I was 20 and fit and strong, like, I was still strong from fit for a 20-year-old. But when I'm 50, I'm going to be like in the top 0.1% of the world, you know, because my peers are going to be so much. So that's kind of, I guess, the positive. I think, I think, I think our, at least I know for me, like, I think your definition of fitness changes as you get older too. Sure. Yeah. Like, and I've, I've already, I'm experiencing this being 36 going on 37 right now of this, like I, I am arguably in some of the best health shape I am right now, but aesthetically I'm nowhere near that. Like I look, I've looked way better physically, but I mean, as my mobility, I have no aches or pains. Like I've had, I've struggled with knee with low back. I mean, I'm dealing with my Achilles still, but that's a, just, that's a uh, acute injury that I'm still rehabbing. Right. But overall feel really, really healthy and balanced and, and seeing other aspects of my life that encompasses health and wellness that I probably didn't look at, when I was 25. So, and and imagine if I am that way now at 36, I bet that I'll be that way, a different way at 45 and at yeah. 55 and 65. I bet when I'm 60, you know, sure, I want to look good and look like the buff 60 year old guy to a point, but I think it'll continue to drop down on the totem pole as far as my priorities and what I, what I gauge. Like, I think at that age, it'll be like, can I go run and play with my kids? Can I go and do do things that are fun and physical still at 60? Will I still be able to get up on a wakeboard and snowboard? It'll be, that to me would be like a big deal because yeah, it's, it's a lot less of a, a cock measuring you know, contest for me. Yeah. You know? Like I'm not like looking at other dudes like, yeah, like even from a performance aspect of it where I used to just pride myself in being one of the stronger ones in the gym and like I could keep up and do all this like crazy shit. It's it's so much more on how I feel, you know, if and maintaining that strength personally and just paying attention to my own progression. Like I seriously have even less windows. You know, like I am so much more just focused on like myself, my own progress, like how I feel, like responding to um, you know, what what I need to be doing personally. I could give a fuck about what everybody else is doing. It's like less and less and less how much I care about everybody else and what they're doing. Yeah, the the difference between, you know, young people and the difference between old people in terms of fit and healthy and not fit and healthy, what, uh, I mean, it's stark. Like, if you take a fit 20-year-old and you compare them to their peers in terms of the way they look, how they move, their performance and their health, there's definitely a difference, but it's not like a massive difference. Now, you take a 60-year-old, that's been exercising the, most of their life and eating right most of their life and compare them to the average 60-year-old that, and I'm not talking about the super unhealthy 60-year-old, I'm just talking about the average American 60-year-old who probably doesn't really work out, maybe walks every once in a while and their diet's kind of been all over the place. The difference between those two people is it's like light years. I yeah. mean, you get up to 70 and 80, because I trained a lot of people in this age group. I used to enjoy training people in advanced age. And I had a client, uh, Jim, who a good friend of mine, uh, still talk to him. He's now 71, I believe. He, he's actually, he helped uh, uh, Doug and I film the first MAPS program. He's actually there with us, helping us with the, 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 you know, the, the soundboard and all that stuff. But anyway, 
This guy's 70 years old, right? He's been swimming every single day for 30 years for about an hour and a half straight in the pool. So he just goes back and forth in the pool. So he got tremendous endurance. Then he lifted weights four days a week, and he'd been doing that for decades as well. He's also very regimented with his diet and nutrition. He's just It's just something he enjoys. This is a 70-year-old man that I would do core workouts with him, and he'd kick my ass. No joke. But if you compared him to another 70-year-old, I had other 70-year-olds that would come hire me who'd never worked out before, and I have to teach them how to be able to get up yeah, off of get a up chair. get up out of a chair, get off the ground. Or reach up above yeah. their head because they can't reach into a- Just lose all their ability. They can't reach above their head because their arm won't straighten out. Or they've got tremendous back pain or whatever. They've got these real health issues that are that are you know threatening their, their livelihood. Meanwhile, I had Jim who didn't own a car, or at least he did own a car, but never drove it. He rode his bike everywhere. He could stay up late with me because we've hung out a bunch of times. He can work out whenever he wants. Got his testosterone levels checked. He was at 650 at a 70 year old at 70 years old for testosterone, which is a good level for a 30 year old. Like the difference is incredible. So although yes, your body does, your your age does affect your performance. The the trajectory is blunted tremendously as you uh, as you exercise and eat right. And it's like. It's so crazy as you get older. That's why I can't look, I can't wait. I can't, I look forward to aging a lot because I look forward to that. I look forward to being healthy and mobile as I become wiser and as I have more experience because there's a lot of benefits you get with age as well. That's another thing too is I know in in in, in this country in particular, uh, but mainly Western societies, uh, especially the newer ones, we tend to look at age as a bad thing. And part of it is because we glorify sex appeal and youth and all that stuff. And the other part of it is people don't age very well. People in these, in, in these you know, modern developed societies tend to not age very well. They tend to have health problems. They're all on medications and all these different things. But as you get older, look, you gain tremendous wisdom. I'm, I mean, I'm almost 40, right? I'm 39. I am light years more wise today than I was 15 years ago. Light years. I can't imagine where I'm going to be 15 years from now. Mm-hmm. You combine that with a mobile, fit, healthy body. Are you kidding me? Right. I can't wait for that combination of wisdom with, so I don't need to be like my max strength, max fitness. I just need to be able to fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. Combine that with that wisdom and potentially more, you know, better finances because if you get older, you can invest it and be smart. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a fucking awesome life. I, I think f- from a physical standpoint, I think like a, a Paul check is such a cool example oh. Of what I think, great a, example, right? A lot of us would would love to look and feel, and in the choices that he makes, because he's very balanced. Like I mean, yeah. I could you could get him to probably take a shot of alcohol with you if it's the right occasion. He's not somebody who has to be in the gym every single day. Some of his workouts are outside, but then he can also get in there and throw two hundred seventy five pounds on his back after it, and yeah. hang with some of these dudes that are jacked on testosterone that are working and stuff like that. So to me, that's fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? Or right. he could go lift four hundred pounds off the ground while he's painting like these that like that's cool at that age to be able to and then to comfortably take his shirt off and look look great dude, you know? he's 55 he looks amazing yeah. yeah and there's plenty of guys that look better than him there's dudes that are in their 60s that are jacked and on roids and and look amazing for their age dude if i can just maintain my athleticism and abilities and strength you know like that the, the body my body's going to be a reflection of that and then you know also pursuing health because of the more knowledge you acquire and like you said sal the wisdom that you know we're gaining from the whole process it's just efficiency is just going to be the word for me is like how much more efficient i can be at the whole process and that's just going to Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm just going to enjoy it even more as I age. Next up is Spartan Wim. Imagine being the other guy's wingman. How would you sell them to a girl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Who put this question? I, I, Sal asked me uh, if he could do it. And I'm uh, like, yes, let's do this yeah. one. Oh, I, was How not, would you I can't go man? first because I wasn't ready for yeah. this. I got to think for a second. How would you wingman for the other guys? <laughs> How would you sell them? God, that's a uh, that's a funny one. Uh, well, if I, let's see, if I was wingmanning for Ad, Adam, I would get a, a picture of him from us, that picture that he has where he's hanging over the chair with his butt cheeks hanging out of his pants. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. And I'd be like, hey. Soccer moms all over yeah, the world. I right got there. this, I got this single friend I think you should meet. He's like, really? Tell me about him. I'm like, first look at this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Romance covered. It. Yeah. It sells itself really yeah. at that oh, point. Yeah. 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 How, you know, you know, what's funny about this is I had this conversation with my cousins a while ago. So I have, I have a lot of cousins that are my age and then we have this younger generation of cousins that are all about maybe eight years younger than us. 
And year, a few years ago, actually, a few years ago, we all went out. And so these guys were still in their early 20s, and we were in our mid-20s, uh, excuse me, mid-30s. And um, we went out somewhere, and they were trying to pick up on girls. And me and my cousins, who are all in our age group, we were all married at the time, so we weren't there to pick up girls. But we're watching these younger generation do, do, try to do that, so it's fun to watch, right? And we're watching them, and they're just failing miserably. And so the, the problem was is they weren't pumping each other up. They were competing right, with each other. I was just going to say yeah. that that's the problem with guys that think they're wingmen to other guys. Yeah, they're like, they yeah. Com- they're, tr- they're like cutting each other down and competing with each other over a girl's attention. No, no, no. And it's like, you guys are never going to, like, you're not going to, no it girls going to want to talk to you. look bad, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the whole time. You, I've learned that since day one. Like, that was... Yeah, the wingman thing, you know, that was that was one of those. I can always present my friends in a certain light, and like, because that makes you look better. Then they end up even just wanting to talk to you more because you're like putting your friend in such a, a good light and yeah. like you know complimenting them. L- and- listen, dude, uh, being a great wingman is just like a, an incredible assist in basketball. And 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 in an assist in basketball, there's sometimes you can pass it to a guy because he's open, and then sometimes he's not open at all, and you can't pass it to him. So trying to force the ball into a situation mm. that is defended already is not going to happen. So you just first have to become aware of that. So a wingman is somebody who has this ability to talk and communicate with a girl, and then when that opportunity arises where I can assist over to Sal or Justin, I'm going to take that opportunity, which that opportunity is an opportunity for me to pump my boys' tires. Like I'm going to talk right. about, but I'm also not going to force it. Like It's not a walk over and Justin go like, oh, that girl over there is really hot. So then I go walk over there and as a wingman, I go like, hey, my buddy likes you. Hot. Like, no, yeah. that is not the move whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. The move is to be fucking normal, Lose. talk to people, talk to everybody, be friendly with everybody. And as, as you're communicating and talking to this- And this, sometimes you can see who would be a great blend. Right, well, like somebody, somebody that has a little bit more of like, oh, I like festivals, and I, you know, I like, I, know I like, <laughs> yeah, so, <asshole. laughs> like, like, I don't use deodorant, and you know, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my god, you're so good. Like, this is perfect. I got a guy for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest. He's, oh, like, really he's like right in your level, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and then it's like, you're like, oh wow, you just got, you just bought those today. Wow, they look great. They look awesome. I got a guy for you. <laughs> you you're talking about boobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm talking about boobs. Yeah, so. No. You know, they're, they're, there's people. You just got to read yeah. your crowd. What's yeah. wrong with the wingmen today is that is exactly that. They, wingmen think that it's like, okay, two guys go out to the bar and a good wingman, you know, takes the grenade for his buddy when he hooks up and meets the one girl. And, right. And that's that's a good <laughs> fucking wingman, right? Or whatever, you know, or goes over and says, hey, my friend likes you. But no, a really yeah. good a, a good wingman can go and talk to and you guys converse with multiple groups of girls and it works both ways too on this like the best the, the best wingman in the world is just a funny charismatic friend of yours Th- those are the best openers because it's a, that's the a tough ice, one icebreakers he has to be yes. he has to be confident enough though to be in front of a, of a pretty girl and be okay with talking about you and not himself mm-hmm. yes right so if i'm in a situation and, and we're that's we're, tough for a lot of guys it is tough that's the tough part that's yeah. where most guys fail as wingmen is they think it's like oh just meet my guy or meet my buddy or whatever. like no do you have the ability to to make a connection with the girl that you're talking with that you know that you're like justin gave a great example you know if, and, and i know we were teasing and being funny and like you know a girl that doesn't wear deodorant or someone <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, in that doesn't wear a bra yeah. but you know somebody that has similar values we all know each other really really well and so uh i know what justin's values are i know what sal's values are i'm familiar with my own right so i know our values and if we're talking to a group of girls and one of them their values align with justin really well then i'm gonna find a way to segue into talking about my good friend justin and that to me is the ultimate assist to that girl because she's already communicated that she has these things. Now, that being said, and I'm sure any girl listening right now would agree with this, most women already made their fucking mind. Up. I know, right? As soon as it, girls fucking have all the control. Yeah. Girl walks in the bar. So much power. Her, her and her four friends walk in the bar. They instantly go, you know, they have eyes in the back of their head. Everyone knows this, right? So they, they can scan okay. the floor. Perfect with example of that, and I, I don't want to roll Taylor under the bus, but when we were in Austin, <laughs> Texas, right, and I see, and I'm talking to this girl, and we're just, you know, I'm having a good conversation. We're, having, we're at this bar, and I just see her eyes just like out of the corner, like just looking at him, like constantly. 
And I could just tell that there was this, like, I'm talking to you, but I kind of want to talk to this guy or whatever. So I just started walking over. And then that just became a natural conversation that, you know, took off on its own. Oh, but- right there. So, okay, if I'm wingman right there and I catch that moment, like uh, the, I'm the icebreaker, the, the transition right there, I go like, he's gorgeous, right? Yeah, you exactly. Know? <laughs> you know, I was like, look at that man bun. I would totally, I, mean, I would totally say I something like it. that about one of my friends. And then she would probably giggle because she got caught looking <laughs> at him, stuff like that. And, yeah. that's a, and then I would go even further and go, you know, what's crazy is he's actually an even better guy when you get to know him. He's probably one of the best humans that I know. Right. And then I would go into telling a story about why he is such a good guy and it's game over then yeah. if she's already the puppy from drowning she, right exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you have some good can stories yeah. already that's not a bad idea if you want to be really good no, it's a puppy from drowning i think i think that's the the mistake that most guys make when they're when they're out trying to be, be these you know quote unquote wingmen for each other is they're still competitive and each guy is trying to get his own and it's like you can't go out like that you have to go out looking to pass the ball first mm-hmm. and then if 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 it plays out which I used to always drive me crazy too if we were with guys and a girl is obviously into another one of my buddies and the other guy is trying to go in there and cock block it's like dude she's already said enough things that you and I both know she's into Justin dude yeah. like I know you're attracted to her but it doesn't matter she's already showed interest in him like what you can do now is be a good wingman and assist Justin even further isn't it isn't it funny though it like even leading like even when I was single or like you know when you're single and you have that mentality already that it's like, well, you know, just whoever it's going to fit best with, like you do so much better leading with that than you do like looking for it. Right. Yeah. Not you know, a lot. Like, of, not a lot of guys are good wingmen, man. I, I used to. I used to prefer to be by myself than with two, three other knuckleheads that were all stepping on each other's dicks. Would you really? Yeah. Would you really go to the bar by yourself? Oh yeah. Fun? All by yourself? Oh yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's probably move. well. It's it's probably easier because a, a, a group of guys has got to be like no, you're super. Right. You end like, up getting cockpit. Yeah. No. No night. girl's gonna want to. Uh, man, I, I can't see women walk up to a group of, of guys. Of course not. And think about that. I mean, and and normally when you got a group of three or four guys, maybe you're lucky and one of your boys got like actually has a mouthpiece on them or has some game then the other two are like derelicts yeah you know they're all they're standing around staring at girls gooing and gone or like yeah. pointing like it's like <laughs> yo we look we look like we're at a zoo you know and what i'm saying like, what the, the fuck fight are you guys doing night? like we're yeah. not gonna no one's going home with anybody so yeah. i would just go like i'm gonna go over here and i would just i would leave my group <laughs> yeah. of buddies that i'm with and i go by the bar by myself or i would go butt into a conversation that has four or five girls and i'm by myself you have like a rendezvous point yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i'll, see, I'll, I'll, I'll catch yeah. you with you guys later I'll see you guys just if you see me talking to some girls don't come in and inter- yeah. interrupt leave me alone <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like hilarious. i don't need your help <laughs> That's right but some guys are i i have had some friends of mine that but the ones that are are the ones that are extremely confident and humble and just they want to see you have a good time as much as they want to have a good time and they see a girl to me I don't know it's it's very obvious when somebody is vibing you or not vibing you Mm -hmm. and then from there really it's up to you to fuck that up or to assist it and I think a lot of guys fuck it up because they're they're trying too hard or they're stepping on each other trying to and getting in each other's way when it's like listen you can tell that she's into Justin every time he says a stupid every joke single time. she laughs hell a lot yeah. like there's giveaways dude People like just don't realize when it, when a guy says something and you know him really well and it's not that funny and yeah. i've seen this with Justin before this is very common you know what i'm saying it's like he says something I'm like that's not even his funny it's material not even funny, and man. she's like, like oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's like, yeah. oh wow, she likes Justin. Like, so I can. It's like a litmus test. Right it is. There. It is yeah. totally is. Right. To laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> laughing at bad like, jokes. Like, yeah, if she's really laughing at bad jokes, she probably likes you. If she's looking down at her watch or her phone or over your shoulder when you're talking to you, yeah. she's probably not into you, and she's into somebody else. So That's it, man. here's your sign. That's it. Hey, a lot of people don't know that we're also on Instagram. You can find all of our own personal information, fitness, health, and lifestyle stuff. On our pages, my page is Mind Pump Sal, Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee 
And you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.